You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, hello, kits and cubs, <laughs> and good morning, <laughs> and welcome to season three and episode number 89 of the Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Friday, March 31st, 2023, and after a colder than usual day here at the Beaver Lodge, it's going to be very nice here. It is also the Transgender Day of Visibility, so sisters and brothers, we see you. <laughs> Kit Ellen says Douglas looks naughty today, and you would be right. <laughs> I am feeling naughty because though today recording day is Friday, March 31st, 2023, it really is December 25th, 2023. We've gone forward in time because it's the most wonderful time of the year. The orange shit stain was indicted, and now you know. Oh, yes, indictment day. Oh, man. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas. <laughs> and my birthday. And Canada Day, all rolled up in one. Well, he still has... Return on investment day. He still has to get yeah. convicted, though, right? I know, I know, but geez, like, let me have this, man. Mm. <laughs> After a life of criming, we like get to break out. I, I feel some Lizzo. Mm. Yeah, it's like, turn up the music, turn down the lights. I got a feeling the case going to be airtight. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's about damn time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling good as hell. <laughs> you were about to go to jail. You were about to go to jail. Check his pants. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's just, oh. I am so happy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yesterday, finally, the news waiting for and proof, maybe, possibly, maybe that it is true that no man is above the law in the United States because uh, so far we have not seen very much proof of that being the case. Hmm? It's been mostly mm -hmm. like, well, everybody is above. One man specifically seemed to be above the law up until now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know I got to manage my expectations. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> man can uh, dare to dream, dare to dream. 
Ah, yeah. Let me have this. Let me have this. Um, now, it seems that after, um, well, telling everybody that was going to happen last week when he really did have no clue, and then telling everybody that there would be death and destruction if he got indicted, and after telling all his people that they need to come, well, you know, come come to my arraignment will be wild. He didn't actually mm. use those specific words, but, um, and nobody came out. Um now, now people might start coming out now, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, he basically uh, just came out and said that uh, we did not see what we saw. So his team says uh, this was not an indictment for a crime. There was no crime because normally we indict people for no crimes. Yeah, that's not how it goes. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way it worked, right? Um, so yeah, it uh, it seems that. Uh, for fudging the books and uh, for asking somebody to uh, cover something up, uh, he is going to be charged. Um, there, how would I put it say? It? How would I say? It? My, well, Michael Cohen said that this validates the saying that nobody is above the law, not even a former president. He was indicted in Manhattan, uh, and uh, well, you know, Trump likes to pump his pump himself up so he can go around and tell everyone that he's number one. He is the first president ever in history mm -hmm. to be indicted. This is true. Also the first president to lose the popular vote in two consecutive elections. Also the first president to be impeached twice. Also the first president. Anyway, um, so, yeah, he's number one. He's number one. He's number one. <laughs> Woo! I need this big foam finger. Woo! <laughs> can, can you say Shandon Freud? <laughs> oh, man. Again, I should... I, I know it is wrong to be this happy at the misfortune of others. Mm -hmm. But I don't really care. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, Yusuf Salam, one of the Central Park Five, remember that case in the United States mm -hmm. where there was a girl in Central Park that was murdered and they suspected that it was five people, of course, who were not white that did that. And it seems that uh, they were proven uh, that was not guilty and there was DNA evidence, but uh, Trump still took a full page newspaper ad calling for the death penalty for them. Well, you mm -hmm. had a one word comment. Karma. Comes for everybody in the end, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, he's been informed. It seems that because it is white collar crime and not violent crime, he has the option of when it is that he will surrender as opposed to people coming up to his door and grabbing him by the collar and bringing him in. Uh, there has been talk about whether or not he would want a mugshot in Perp Walk. It seems that word on the street is that he actually wants those things because he will then use them as marketing things to tell everyone how oppressed and how unfair. So unfair. So unfair. Uh, <laughs> so he will surrender. And when he does that, then he will be booked, which means the fingerprints, the mugshot, and the perp walk to the court for his arraignment. Uh, now, this sort of came as a surprise because on Thursday, there was an announcement that the grand jury would be meeting again, that they had, that they were going to meet again, but that they were not going to hear evidence. They did not say when they made that announcement that they were not going to vote or that they were going to vote. It seems that uh, Team Trump, at least lawyer Team Trump, thought uh, that there would probably be another week or two before that this was going to happen. But it seems that uh, the grand jury had heard enough and said, yeah, slap the fucker. <laughs> uh, so the legal team was caught off guard. <laughs> they weren't expected to rain arraignments yesterday. Adam Schiff, um, who if you've been following the January 6th uh, things, uh, who's been very involved, he's a um, congressman who will be now be running for the Senate seat uh, being vacated by Dianne Feinstein in California, uh, along with Katie Porter, who'll be running for the seat. So uh, lots of uh, high caliber content uh, trying for one seat. And that means a lot of people will not be left with the seat once this game of musical political chairs is over. Uh, he stated that uh, the indictment of a former president is unprecedented, but so too is the unlawful conduct with, in which Trump has been engaged. 
A nation of laws must hold the rich and powerful accountable, even when they hold high office, especially when they do. To do otherwise is not democracy. So you're going to hear all these people go turn around and says, oh, this is unprecedented. It's the first tip real. It's the first one. And if we could go after Trump, we can go after you. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Isn't that yeah, how the law works? Ended. You break the law, you get arrested. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing, right? And that's un- it's like, yes, it is true that these charges are unprecedented, but um, everything he has done has pretty much been unprecedented. So it kind of fits unprecedented happening for an unprecedented person who did unprecedented things. It's not wild. <laughs> it's, it's the law. So mm-hmm. welcome to consequence culture, Biatch. Hope you like it. Hope you hope orange really is your color too. Um, now it seems that the prosecutors are also looking. Uh, the reason why this is taking time is that they might be looking at other charges, not just the expending of uh, the hundred thirty thousand dollars to pay off Stormy Daniels. Um, everybody was going, "Wow, that's all there's going to be. There's all all there's going to be." And they've been keep playing cards close, to, keeping cards close to the vest, and playing it uh, really, really tight on letting the information out. But it seems that uh, they are also asking about the Karen McDougal catch and kill case. Karen McDougal, McDougal was another uh, play, play, Playboy playmate of the year, I believe, uh, with whom Donald Trump had uh, some type of relationship, and along uh, David Pecker, great name, uh, from the National Enquirer. Uh, gee, talk about some accidental humor there, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Trump and a whole bunch of people had this scheme going on whenever he did something wrong to finally corner that person, pay them some money you know, for their story, and then never publish the story. That's what catch and hook kill is, is you catch the story, you do all the interviews, you get it all, you pay the person, you get the exclusive rights to the story, and then you bury it mm. instead of publishing it. Um, so they're looking at that, and uh, it seems that these types of things may have been done a few times, and that would bring in what is called in uh, the state of New York the Little RICO charges. Uh, federally, in the United States, they have RICO um, charges. I can't remember what it stands for off the top of my head, uh, but oh, Rac- Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. So they're talking about racketeering here organized well basically some some type of organized crime um, and uh, certain states have similar statutes modeled on the federal uh, statute which is then called uh, little Rico so it seems that under little Rico uh, they're looking at these catch and kill stories potentially as being some type of form of racketeering and which would make uh, for an enterprise corruption charge to go along um, with uh, the charges of having uh, misexpensed this money uh, or misreported this money. Uh, according to the United States Criminal Code, a person is guilty of enterprise corruption when having knowledge of the existence of a criminal enterprise and the nature of his activities and being employed by or associated with such an enterprise, he or she, one, intentionally conducts or participates in the affairs of an enterprise by participating in a pattern of criminal activity, keyword pattern, intentionally acquires or maintains an interest in or control of the enterprise by participating in a pattern of criminal activity, that's two, or three, participates in a pattern of criminal activity and knowingly invests any proceeds derived from that conduct or proceeds derived from the investment or use of those proceeds in an enterprise. Um, So that's, it seems that lawyers may be looking at that as well as additional charges in the indictments. The indictments so far are still under seal from the grand jury, so we don't really know what exactly he's going to be charged with. There is some rumors that um, one of them will be a felony. So there might be more than one charge, not one of them's a felony. Uh, Kit Jim asks, do the lawyers get scooped up in those charges? Uh, the lawyers would not get scooped up in these specific charges. There are uh, individual processes for them, and some of the lawyers are already involved uh, in them uh, based uh, for months based on other things that they have done. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, 
Uh, I see Jen says 34 charges total, so maybe uh, there's been uh, another release since we've been on air uh, and since I last listened to news that have uh, revealed them. But last I had checked, uh, they were still under seal. So uh, I will do a check for that on the show while Mr. Grizzly's talking at some point and bring you more on that. Another development is that uh, Trump's former chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, seems to be changing lawyers. Uh, Alan Weisselberg's lawyer was being paid for by the Trump organization, but it seems that the people in the Trump organization are not really too happy with the lawyer. They feel that he has been giving too much to his client and not caring enough about the man who's paying the bills. Hmm. Now, Alan Weisselberg got a very, very sweet deal, only five months for lots of criming uh, to testify against the Trump organization. He technically didn't testify against Trump. Uh, He'll probably still be retained to testify against the organization uh, in other cases. But typically, if someone is changing their lawyer at this phase of the game, it might be because they think that their interests are no longer being put above those of the person paying the bills. Of course, the person paying the bills is doing so because they want their interests put above the the client. Um, So um, Alan Weisselberg may have seen where his bread is buttered and decided to change lawyers. Um, Don't know. There's not too much details. There's also word on the tweet that uh, the change in lawyers may have come from the Trump organization itself, that people on the inside may have uh, convinced Eric Trump to uh, cut off the funding for the lawyer because... The lawyer was doing his job too well on behalf of his client. <laughs> so that's about where things stand now on what I have. Um, but uh, yeah, it started. And that's the first domino. Because I'm sure with all these uh, different cases going on, a lot of people were wondering, well, who's got to go first? Who's got to go first? Uh, because he's got that case in uh, Georgia. Hmm? with uh, Fonnie Willis leading the charge there. And uh, it seems that all the people that have been trying to get out of having to testify by invoking privileges have all been losing their cases, even Mike Pence. <laughs> yeah, he tried to, to say that he, would, that he was a member of uh, the Congress on the day he was reading uh, the votes. So therefore, he couldn't talk because on that specific day, even though he wasn't elected to Congress, he was a member of Congress because he was par- presiding the ceremony. Uh, so the judge said, okay, okay, you know, with the speech and debate clause, everything you were doing during the ceremony on opening opening the envelopes and reading the names and whatnot, okay, you won't have to testify about that. But everything that happened before that, all your conversations with Trump that, you know, that were maybe... You noticed him talking about criminal stuff and all the things that happened after you left that chamber where you were opening the envelopes and reading the vote. You have to testify about all that, though. <laughs> so we'll grant you your speech and <laughs> clause for the little things that you were doing in the in that room at that time, <laughs> but nothing else. Um, so, um, yeah, someone's in trouble. Someone's in trouble. <sighs> and you love to see it. You really, really do love to see it. So, yeah, there you go, buddy. Um, Enjoy your life. Maybe even enjoy your life sentence. Never know. Time will tell. (sighs) Okay. So now that we've brought joy and happiness (laughs) to everyone, (laughs) Mr. Grizzly, um, I did not ask you. Did I ask you how your mental health was today? I didn't don't think I did. So how are you and how's your mental health today? I was so excited. Yes, you were. I, you were <laughs> on a roll, so I wasn't going to interrupt you. I figured, you know, just, you know, you're, you're, you're having a delightful, gleeful start to the day, so why why run that? Ruin that, you know? Wow. No, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm great. I'm awesome. I'm a little tired. Uh, you because sure I was, I was, uh, I didn't get to bed till 2 a.m. Because uh, there was this little, I did a thing last night. Did a, you um, did a thing. You did quite a thing. I'm a little envious. 
Did a little thing last night. Um, went out to see um, Classified with um, uh, our good buddy, friend of the podcast, uh, somebody you're going to be working with on a regular basis very yes. soon. There's a picture of me and him out in Burnstown, which is a small uh, community of about 100 people, uh, not far from Iron Pryor, just a little past Iron Pryor. And uh, of course, your response was, What the hell is this? And then, of yeah. course, Joe Williamson's. <laughs> <laughs> You've been holding out on me, my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your kid? <laughs> well, since he's 46 and I'm 54, I'd have to, wow, I'm eight years old. No, I wasn't fathering children at that age. <laughs> I, I don't have any children whatsoever. <laughs> None. Seriously. <laughs> you can't even approach me and say, well, there's always a pause. Nope. 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 Not the way I like to do it. <laughs> Let your imagination run wild. <laughs> oh, here we go. You can tell it's a Friday. We're already getting casual. <laughs> well, I'm running on three hours sleep. So yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm running on a, about an hour less than I thought I would get. Not for anything wrong, but my, uh, I think my beaver sweetie is hitting the point in his recovery where he's having trouble sleeping through the night where he's getting a little uncomfortable now and then mm. wakes up and then gets up for a while so he did that last night and when he came back to bed uh i think within like 10 minutes of putting his head on the pillow he was snoring again <laughs> it's like oh you came to bed you moved around you woke me up now you're snoring so i guess i'm up now <laughs> apparently <laughs> which was good actually today because it uh i got up about half an hour up half an hour earlier, which allowed me to get all this information on the arraignment. Because <laughs> mm. normally so I gotta, I'm up. A... Go ahead, go ahead. I said normally I'm up a, a, a little bit later, so I have time to like you know get a little bit of food in me and mm. you know clean the sleep out of my eyes and make myself you know minimally presentable. Mm. And then I, I you know listen maybe to like you know the the five minute or ten minute update in case something major happened and that's it but today i had like a good 45 minutes so i just settled in on the sofa and with the bowl of cereal and took some notes and <laughs> just a leisurely start to the day um yeah so i have a I have a I have a quick clip for you from last night's show all right I ju i'm just i'm gonna because this is yes yes please quick clip from last night's show and that's all I'm showing because uh, this was uh, a thing for blackballed. But uh, I got to share this because this is really cool. I love this song, too. Oh, I don't think we have any audio. Oh, no audio? Well, that, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's we a... just heard something from the kit say audio with a question mark. Oh, sorry about okay. that. We'll try I wasn't hearing. Right. I wasn't hearing any either, but normally when I don't hear any, it's still going there, so I didn't say anything to interrupt it. Uh, it's because when I, when I uh, brought it in, I forgot to share the system audio, so it's, ah. that's my bad. That's my bad. Bad tech. Bad tech. Bad producer. It happens. Here we go. Here we go. Mistake. All right, here we go. <laughs>
So that was uh, just a, a few seconds that. from last show, um, an acoustic set, uh, literally an acoustic hip hop set, which was well, my camera out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was dancing too hard. Maybe. Just did your this. camera from, from over here. There we go. <laughs> It was weird. I had to go to Manuel. Oh, Manuel. Uh, Manuel. He's a, a good guy. We work together right now. Manuel. Uh, anyway. Manuel, yes. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Inner Ninja by Classified. It was uh, one of the closing songs from last night's show. And, His biggest uh, hit. Yeah, biggest hit, but yeah, by far. Yep. Uh, and um, it just, such a danceable. But yeah, an acoustic hip hop show, which I didn't think was a possible thing. And he... Right. He didn't just pull it off. He knocked it right out of the park. Small venue, but um, really intimate venue, like a yeah. really cool spot. And I don't want to talk too much about it because it's, it's for James. He, he, he's got a whole black ball segment coming up on it um, with an interview. And you'll, you'll see. I, I, that's all yeah. I'm going to say. I don't want to spoil but he's, it. I just, he's interviewed him twice recently as well. Yes. And, yeah, uh, I've listened yeah. to both of them. And, and they're great. Dude. It's this thing. He's, he's reworked all the songs and made them acoustic. And um I personally like it because I think, I mean, his lyrics are genius and he's got great flow. And I think mm -hmm. when you take up all those, take out all those production things and just make it acoustic, you really get to hear the quality. The song. Of the, yes. Of the song. Uh, and, and the, and the words hit different. Mm -hmm. The moods hit, hit a little different. Uh, so yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. Kit Lindheim says that's quite a cozy set. Indeed. He's been doing a specifically small, uh, small venues. Uh, and he was nominated for Juno for the album as well, uh, of, doing his uh redoing his uh, songs as acoustic and i thought for sure 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 he would win uh but he did not this year uh there was uh, something that people preferred more um the song uh ellen uh, is called inner ninja it's his biggest hit uh but he's got lots of them that are really great oh, yeah. he's got a song called changes that has andrew leash singing uh the chorus line which is fantastic he's got a song called three foot tall which is great just song. A, i mean if if oh, he ever, played that last night too yeah um He's excellent. He's really, really excellent. So, uh, yeah, please uh, take some time to check it out. Uh, Kit's uh, classified as his name, and uh, uh, even if you're someone that's not particularly into rap, uh, you might really like his music because of the lyrical content. There's actual substance. Yes, and and well, the the two musicians you saw him on stage with, um, outstanding. Uh, yes. both musicians and singers. Wait to hear these guys sing. Like, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Really good time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so envious. I'm so envious. It was fun. It uh, was a good it was a good night. Yeah. Oh, I can night. imagine. Uh, I'm so happy for you though. Yeah, thanks. It was a good time. Um, yeah. It was uh it was in one of those things is like so Burnstown is forty five, fifty minutes away. And I thought, okay, I'll try and get there a little bit earlier. And I I I neglected to check to see if the Sens were playing last night. <gasps> they were. And yes, and they won. Which was awesome. But of course, you know where I live. Yes. Burnstown is near Arnprior. For those of you who are unaware, oh, that is in the west side. Ever to get home. It, no, to get there. Getting oh, home was easy. Getting okay. there was difficult because the game started. Game starts at seven. I left my house at six and it took me 45 minutes to get across town. Yep. So, you know, I added 25 minutes to the trip. Getting home was easy because I, you know, it was like 12. 12 30 okay, by the so time yeah, i left so no times. big deal there was yeah. nobody there but yeah it was uh, it was a bit of a challenge to get there so i'm like why is the traffic i'm like i'm thinking i want is there a scent i didn't think the sense were playing tonight so I'm, I'm driving along and i just hit a thing on the on the dashboard there and it's like yeah there's a game oh, yeah. okay that would explain it yeah yeah uh, rihanna, uh, rihanna just put a, a link in the uh, in the chat there you guys just want to chat uh, a link for um, classified He's good. Yeah. He's good. So good Canadian kid. Real nice guy, yeah, too. Good Canadian kid. Yep, from the Maritimes. Uh, our Sens, our beloved Sens, uh, are now in 10th. They need to be top eight. They're five points behind the Pittsburgh Penguins. Five they, points. They, they might left. make the playoffs. How many? Is it eight or seven? eight games seven or six games? games? Seven. seven. Seven, yeah. They're so. at 75. I think there's 82 in the season. Yes, 82. Yeah. So they could pull it off. They could make the, they they could make the playoffs. Off. They could pull it off. Oh. Get, gotta remember, all you gotta do is get into the playoffs because after that it's a whole new season. You put exactly. together a string of wins. I'm not predicting they'll win the Stanley Cup. Don't no hey, look, we're stranger things have happened. I'm not predicting that. 
but you can get into the into the playoffs and you know you could be the number one team in your division and and near the top of the league for five years running and get knocked out in the first round yep here's here's looking at you toronto <laughs> yep uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh. sorry not sorry <laughs> well that kind of happened to us um i have a curling update uh from my while uh, my mixed doubles team uh did really well and won its first match uh my two-person stick we missed the playoffs by this match the in, top in construction in. The, in construction that seven. measurement's called a ch yeah, we finished 17th to 16th, go in 17th. And it was literally, literally the fact that the team that we were tied with, we had one more loss. We had more one more win than they did, but we had one more loss, and the losses were used to break the tie, not the wins. <sighs> mm. <laughs> so close. So that's close. life life oh. happens oh darn oh. had the had the had our and it was really really basically what happened for us is we had a rock that we were trying to take out and we had to hit it on this side and i happened to hit it on that side which changed the hole so i i i, I made the shot i hit the rock but it over curled just at the last minute and that's how we lost the game and that's how we didn't get to the playoffs. I was so close. <laughs> so close. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yes, Jen knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> in Scotland, it's a red CH. <laughs> it's a unit of measurement in construction. Just move it to CH. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, man. I'm, I'm not so, going to explain yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Grizzly, do you have any things for us? Because... Uh, we yeah, I got, I got a with my stuff today. quick little, quick little hit for you here is, um, you know how I always say the robots are coming for your job. AI is coming for your paycheck. And uh, specifically, where is it? I have a whole thing here. Advances in artificial intelligence promise to boost productivity and global GDP. Bad news is it could cost you your job. The study estimated two-thirds of jobs in the U.S. and Europe are exposed to AI automation. A study of chat GPT maker OpenAI put that number as high as 80%. Ooh. Now, here's why it matters. Um, automation putting people out of work is nothing new, of course. We know about this. This yeah, has been around for nice. since the dawn of time. AI is just the most recent iteration. What is new is the type of jobs that will be affected. Well, robots previously took the jobs on assembly lines. Now it's white-collar workers who will sustain losses. A study by the University of Pennsylvania found blue-collar industries were likely to remain relatively untouched by AI, with motorcycle mechanics, oil refinery workers, and short-order cooks amongst the least affected. Though cooks will still have to go against uh, Flippy the Robot. I don't know if you're familiar with Flippy the Robot. It's a burger-flipping robot. Okay. The study also claims that information processing roles like court reporters and blockchain engineers are exposed. And... Writers of quizzes and pop culture listicles could be at risk of replacement as BuzzFeed employees are finding out. BuzzFeed is quietly publishing whole AI-generated articles, not just quizzes. So, interesting. The bottom line, AI could be the first technology in modern memory to cause mass job losses for the highly educated and workers are starting to worry. A ZipRecruiter survey following ChatGPT's release found... 62% of job seekers worry AI will blow up their careers. I've been saying this for how long now? Years, quite honestly, years, that between bots and AI, we're going to be losing millions of jobs. The interview we did with Keith Bogue, what, over a year, year and a half ago? About that, yeah. Might, was it two years ago? Anyway, it the was interview just, we, I think it was, we just joined the network, so maybe was it maybe okay. A year ago. Yeah. So the the interview we did with Keith Bogue, I I had a discussion about how look uh, they have automated driving vehicles right now. What happens to the trucking industry? Long haul truckers will disappear because they'll have electric trucks that can drive themselves from distribution point to distribution point. Then you'll have stuff offloaded and and have local delivery people do that for the next couple of years. Eventually, those jobs will go away too. So when I say the robots are coming for your jobs, it's not a joke. It's a legit thing, which is why we need to make bots. You calculate the amount of hours they work for the job that they do, 
what would the income be for a human being and then tax the bot on that because their profit margin for the the, the company that employs the bots employees for want of a better yeah. term will be saving billions in in labor costs so they have to pay a tax on that that'll have to go back into the system to create a universal basic income but it'll have to be better than just basic because you'll now have people with master's degree who are suddenly out of a job yep yep and here and here's the thing too is when we're doing that policy then i guess do we give the robots pay increases well this is what's going to have to right so and that and the pay it gets better yeah. so that we keep yeah like they won't no. actually get paid but you'd calculate you'd have to have yes. a calculation but that's what i mean so who's good but here's the thing is they won't give us pay increases now when we're humans yeah i know so we're, <laughs> we can we're knock screwed. on their door and say can we have a raise basically we're screwed <laughs> so the question begins the, the question begins the question is is this the beginning of the end of money mm -hmm. I mean, like very, very tiny tip of the iceberg. Just it looks like a single f snowflake in the ocean. You know, there's a giant berg beneath it because it just hasn't popped out of the water yet. And I'm thinking this could be where money begins to end. Look, it's not going to end in my lifetime. I'm 54 years old. So let's say, let's say I live for another 45 years. Let's say I make it 46 years. Let's say I make it to 100. I don't think money will be gone in that time frame. But I do believe after some time after I've shuffled off this mortal coil, that money will cease to exist because let's face it, you'll, you'll have greedy people who don't want to pay a damn thing to anybody while they put everybody out of work. Well, who's going to pay for your goods? If you're not employing people, they don't have money to put back into the system. Who pays for the goods and services you're trying to provide with no labor costs? I mean, there's, you know, there's a big cyclical thing. Somebody else, Somebody much smarter than me will will be able to defend this argument and, and present justifiable reasons on, on on as to how to why this exists. But you'll also have somebody who else who will come out in defense of money and say, "No, this is why we got to keep it going," which basically boils down to so I can feel better about myself about those lesser thans that don't have what I have. Mm -hmm. This is what it always has been: the people with more money, not everyone, not absolutely everyone but more than you realize feel so self-important because they're paid a, a better wage than somebody else who does something else for a living that they are better than you somehow. I've mm -hmm. seen it happen to so many people and sometimes they get brought back down to earth. Sometimes I'm the one who brings them back down to earth. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but I've been in that situation where suddenly I realized this individual thought, that they were better than me only because they were earning more money. Yep. And then when I pointed out what I did and how much I worked and how hard I worked and how I had to put my uh, body and, and life in jeopardy for just to earn a paycheck. And they said, well, I work hard too. I go, yeah, I'm not questioning whether you work hard. You worked an 80 hour week. So did I. The difference is at any point in time on the job I was doing, I could have been maimed permanently or killed. Mm -hmm. And yet you earn, earn more than 10 times what I'm earning. And you're, do you not like, there's a, the whole difference there. Right. Anyway, we brought that person back down to earth and they came back to being who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, power corrupts, yep. money corrupts too. Money yep. corrupts your mind because you suddenly feel like I have all this cash. I earned this. I deserve this. I'm entitled to... No, you're not, man. Somebody overpaid you for something that you're doing. And it, and it gave you a, a bloated sense of self-importance. I've seen it happen to so many people. Look, there's a point in time where I was starting to earn some good money and I stopped. I saw that it could... I saw that that could happen to me. And I said, this... this I don't like... I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I refuse to, I mean, I've been shitting on that guy my whole life. So why would I suddenly join that club? So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had to re-examine myself and do some, you know, looking in, in inward and, and, and repairing my thought processes. Because like I said, people, well, there, Linda, Linda sums it up. They consider people who do, do manual labor as replaceable. Mm-hmm. 
we're human capital. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Right. So, right. yeah, I know that was kind of a long-winded rant, but... Right, that's okay. No, 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 because it's, it's important to mention because people's relationship with money is, you know, my relationship with money is, is completely different to many people's mm -hmm. either as well because of the way I grew up, right? Having yes. grown up in foster homes and relatively poor and, you know, you could be living in a big house, but you're reminded every single second that nothing there is yours. Right. Like not even the towels, not even the pillow, not even the bed sheet, right? This was, was one of the reasons why having a stuffed animal or something like that was really, really important because that one, that, that was one thing in the house that was mine. Um, so, yeah, when you don't have it like this and then you start to, um, for me, when I was younger, my relationship with money was that um, I was pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even like say I was frugal. <laughs> I, was, I was tight. I could squeeze that nickel so tight I could make the beaver poop. So, you know, uh, I can really, really. And it took me a long, 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 long time to figure out. I think I was somewhere in my 30s where I would always show up late for everything because I'd be sitting there and it's like, okay, I'm a little late. I could take a taxi, but I'm supposed to mm -hmm. take the bus. And I just can't justify that $25 for the taxi. That's too much money. It's too much of a luxury. Yeah. I'm going to take the reputational hit of being late 15 minutes. I understand that. I can't, I, I can't bring myself to spend that $25. It's, it's frivolous, right? Mm. No, it's not frivolous. It's going to help you get to a meeting on time and not waste seven other people's time. Which is you know? valuable. But you're not thinking about that because your relation, your every single cent that you get, it's like, I may lose this one day and you're saving and you're, you know, and you're not spending because something important might happen one day and, uh, and you might need it. So yeah, you know, I, I had to learn to become more relaxed with it. Uh, and then of course, what to do with it to make sure, you know, that I, that I won't run out. My number one biggest fear is not knowing, you know, where my next meal's coming from and if I'll have a roof over my head. So you know, there's a lot of things I didn't do in my twenties and thirties. A lot of things I didn't spend on because mm -hmm. I made sure that I wanted to, for me, my mental security, I wanted to have like this big cushion. You know, if my bank account goes under a certain amount, I start to panic. And the mm -hmm. amount that I start to panic, uh, is still an amount that would allow me to, when I was younger, would have allowed me to pay my rent for the next six months and eat every day for the next six months. I was like, Oh my God, I don't have enough. Ah, I've dipped under. So, so, but that's what I mean. People's relationship with money is very weird, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, to, so to have a healthy relationship with money, to realize you, know, it's yeah, you know what? Things are a little busy. I will pay someone to come and clean the house mm. this week because that's what money's for is to to help you if you have if you have more of it to help you buy some convenience to help you buy time. It's like, is my time more valuable spending cleaning my house? Or actually spend having somebody pay it, and I'll spend that time with my kids, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I, you know, I like what, it, it, what are you? I like what Rhiannon buying. has to say here. You know, money is a fictional concept used to control the population. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Because, like, mm -hmm. literally, we are the only species that pays money to exist on this planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. 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 But it, but the effect of, well, why don't we just all contribute to one another and we'll all help each other out because that's that big C word that Theo Fleury likes to throw around all the time, which he clearly doesn't understand. Communism. Communism is when yep. everybody in the community, the commune, contributes to mm -hmm. help each other out. And I'm not saying, let's go, con that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying the day will come where money will be useless and pointless because you can't eat it. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yep. So it was that, that, that saying is like only when they've dried up the last river and pulled out the last tree, will they realize they can't eat money? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like this comment from Sarika here, when I was a single mom, that's exactly what my life felt like on a daily basis. I was always in panic mode and would have anxiety come rent time. I'm, I'm the child of a single mother. Mm. So that's get it. maybe where I get it. It was like Aaron, Aaron Brooke, Aaron Brooke, who is somebody I follow on Twitter. If you don't know who she is, seek her out. She's a, a brilliant young woman who was originally from Ottawa, lives in Toronto. She's a musician and uh, um, she does advocacy work. And she sort of, her, her 
she went viral on Twitter a few years back when she said, you know, I've discovered that I'm no longer living in poverty when I was getting groceries and I filled up my cart and I wasn't adding up every single thing that went into the cart so that when I got to the cash, I would know if I had enough. She says, I realized I'm, I'm no longer broke. Mm-hmm. Or I'm, no, no, sorry. I'm no longer poor. Right. I'm no longer poor. She says, I'm not, I'm not rich. I'm not middle class, but I'm no longer poor because I don't have to add up every single thing that I put in the cart and doing the math in my head. So when I get there, I know I can cover it. She says, I just put the food in the cart that I needed. And when I got there, I realized, oh my goodness, I didn't have to think about that. Right. Now that doesn't mean you won't be broke from time to time. I mean, you know, I do groceries. I don't have to think about it either. Yeah. Until it gets a few days before payday and then it's like, Ooh, I got to think about it. <laughs> but yep. that's being broke. And the difference between broke and poor is, you know, you're not always adding up everything you have to spend money on to, to, to keep existing in life. And that's the difference. I'm not poor, yep. but broke, broke is something that I frequently am. <laughs> 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 well, every time I turn around, I got to buy a new piece of gear, right? So yeah. just how it is. You build a business. That's what it takes. You got to spend money. Yeah. Every time I'm broke, it has nothing to do with money. <laughs> it's, it's either something my lower back they'll get your mind out the gutter <laughs> something could be, it's either something about my lower back and i'm laying on the floor or i'm just too damn poop to pop <laughs> mm-hmm. you want to do something hey let's make some food okay want to make a salad uh, that means i have to cut stuff uh, that's exhausting <laughs> Let's order something. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't necessarily disagree with what Elaine is saying here, um, but uh, you know, I've been poor. I've been poor, and it wasn't my attitude. It was that I didn't have enough money to to pay my rent or or put groceries in my cart. I've been there, um, and and you know, I I remember the lowest point in my life was when I had to go apply for welfare. And here's the mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. The welfare system is, it really punches down mm-hmm. the application process mm-hmm. to ask for money from the state. Mm-hmm. I have secret clearance. I've done top secret clearance. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I have top anymore or not. Anyway, uh, they ask less questions, less probing questions to get top secret clearance yep. than the questions I had when I had to fill out a form to see if I could get uh, welfare. And as it turned out, I got a job. I didn't need the money. You know, a couple people helped me out and I've been forever grateful and I will always pay it forward because of that. But, uh, uh, I also discovered that the money that I got wouldn't covered my rent. So what's the point? Yeah. But it, it was the probing questions, dude, I've, I've borrowed tens of thousands of dollars for, for a business that asks less questions. A bank, when I had my business years ago, they just called me up and said, yeah, we just gave you a $20,000 line of credit. What? what? Yep. I didn't even apply for it. They just gave it to me. Yep. Well, same thing with me. Last credit card I applied for, I applied for just a $500 one because well, I lost the, my credit card about a year and a half ago, right? I got pickpocketed. Mm. So, and I didn't have one. So I just got a, decided to have a second one, an emergency one. Sometimes you forget your wallet. So I have one in another place. Um, mm. So there's almost nothing on it. Uh, and I asked just for 500, just right. as emergency last. Yeah. Just an emergency. It's like, Oh, I went out, ah, oh, darn, went to do the groceries, forgot my credit card. Oh, well I had this other one stored here, right? I left my, mm-hmm. I was paying something on the computer and I left my wallet on the desk here. Well, I, I got this. I'm not stuck. I don't have to run to an ATM and leave everything out the cash. You yes. know, and, hold on. I'll be back. And all that kind of stuff. Well, the other day I, I hadn't put anything on it like for about three, four months. And then I put like $200 on it because I didn't have my wallet one day. I, mm-hmm. And then I just like, go back home and I go to pay it. And I look at my credit limit. My credit limit is 8,000. They raised it 7,500 over the past six months without even telling me. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a whole bunch of credit. I'm like, I, and I, I don't want like, or need it. Why are you putting this at my disposal? Now I have, this is this, how upside down the system is though. Right. But I have discipline. Right. Mm-hmm. So again. So I mean, for me, it's okay. It's like, I think my entire life I've carried a balance on my credit card twice. What's because I happened to forget I can't to pay say it. that. <laughs> I happened to forget to pay it. And the second time was when I was in university and I bought a computer. So I, mean, I wasn't making enough money. So I had to carry balance for a bit. Other than I did, that, I I did have mine paid off. 
I had mine paid off with no balance, and then I got uh, I was unemployed, left unemployed, and uh, so I had to you know use that. Uh, I was out of work for a year. Yeah, and uh, doing what you can to make ends okay. meet. Right. And EI did, EI didn't pay enough. Yeah. Like literally, without it, I would have been in dire straits. But it wasn't enough money to keep a roof over my head, so I had to dip in and dip in. I had to borrow from my RSPs. I had to go into the savings account, and you know, eventually, it that gets depleted after a year. You don't have much, so you, you got to restart. So I start restarting and start getting paid things out, and then what happens? A global pandemic. Yeah. Stay home. You you don't get to go to work for two months. Oh, great. And then work for six months at uh, reduced salary, with no vehicle allowance. It, yeah. And I know I'm I'm complaining with a full mouth. I am. But all those people who were whining in my neighborhood, screaming freedom, going, you know how much I lost. I'm like, we all did. You selfish prick. Yeah. I will never recover the money I lost in that time. Never. I had my so next I, four acting shows lined up when COVID hit. Some of them paying jobs. Those those yeah, places all gone. Come back. So guess what? We all okay. lost. There's not a single person who didn't lose something. Yeah. So the difference between you and I is I, well, I don't mean you, sir. I mean myself and the people who occupied my neighborhood was I didn't whine and cry in the streets and complain and ask to overthrow the government and shit on somebody's doorstep and scream freedom and blow horns and light fireworks. And because I'm an adult and adults just go, well, sometimes that's just how it goes. So let's just, um, Pull up our socks, put on our shoes, go back to work. Yeah. What are you going to do? Like well, the shadows. system wants to keep you down. Oh, you're just realizing that now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Welcome to reality. The system's designed to keep you down. Don't you know that? Some people are lucky enough to get ahead. Most of us aren't. There's a reason why it's the 1%. They want the rest of us to make sure they stay rich. And that's not a conspiracy theory. It's largely easy to prove when you look at how much productivity has increased over the last 50 years versus income. Income has remained flat and in some cases has actually dropped while productivity has been on a steady upswing. And I had a graphic. I showed it on this program a couple of weeks back. Mm -hmm. Keep us down while they prop themselves up. Not conspiracy. It's a fact. Am I angry about it? It doesn't consume me. It's not the be-all, end-all. I mean, my God, I still have a job that I love. I have people in my life that love me and I love them like you. I love you. You know that. And mm -hmm. I have this gig that I love. I mean, it's, it's, it's a labor of love because there's no money. <laughs> but It's all labor. <laughs> it's all labor. It's all labor, and I love it. Um, but there's still wonderful things in this life to be grateful for. And, and, and the gentleman I spoke with last night was saying, you know, gratitude. you got to have gratitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. And uh, being grateful for what you have, even sometimes if it's very, very little, will improve your life tenfold. Mm -hmm. You know, every day above ground is a good day. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a rough day. Even if it's a painful day. Elaine can attest to this. Elaine's gone through, you know, Rough couple of months, but every day mm -hmm. above ground's a good day. Yes. Please correct me if I'm wrong. No, it is a good day. It's a good I mean it sounds a little Pollyannish. Poly mm -hmm. You know, like Anne Shirley, every every new day is bright and fresh with no mistakes in it. But yeah, you can put a polish on it if you want. What's going on with my mustache? <laughs> it's all it's out of whack. <laughs> so just, should I tilt my head and just go at an angle for the rest of the show? But yeah, that's, I mean, but you're right. It's what you do. It's like, you know, when things get bad, you know, you can do what the people that came to Ottawa and occupied the city do, or you can, like you say, you, as the song goes, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off and start all over again. Right. I mean, it's, it's what, it's that's what most of us it. did. Yeah. That's what most of us did. Adapt. Millions of us did that. Yeah. Hey, we were yeah. all in it together. Yeah, we, we were just weren't, all in it together. We were all in the same ocean, just not all in the same boat. That's right. Some of us all were in the same storm. The, some of us were on on a door left from the Titanic, <laughs> floating on the river, and some of us were in luxury yachts. But we were all in yes. the same ocean. <laughs> we were all in the same ocean in the same storm. Uh, man. All right. Uh, I have a gentle correction uh, to impose okay. upon myself. 
Oh, okay. Um, I thought, you know, thought it was for me because I'm the one who makes a lot of mistakes. So I figured it would have been me. <laughs> no, no, this one is for me. Uh, a couple of days ago when okay. we were talking about uh, the budget uh, and uh, I was mentioning a 1.5, oh, 1.6, yes. uh, I thought I was talking about that as um, debt to GDP ratio. Uh, mm -hmm. de de debt to GDP ratio was the second set of numbers I gave, like, like you know, around like forty four percent and that type of stuff, and had gone up a little bit and will go down. What I was talking about the, that time was debt servicing to GDP ratio. So how much it costs to service the debt versus your GDP, and this is the one where we're settling in around one point five, one point six percent, according to Kevin Milligan, who's like a great economist. Uh, I like to follow him a lot. Him and Trevor Toom. Yeah, big fans of their other work, uh, but in Great Britain and the United States, the cost to service their debts about five point five and five point four percent of their GDP. Wow! So when you have so this debt servicing, so yes, so our debt to GDP is much higher. It's in the in the forty percent or close to close to forty thirty or something like that thirty nine. But this is to service the debt. So we have, again, if you're looking at this graph, you know, at the bottom, and it's just started to go up a little bit. Here at the end, and where it's projected to be, you see that little red line by twenty twenty six. So I mean, we're we're doing well. We're doing really, really, really well. And again, if we were all in the same ocean, so we're all affected by the war. Mm -hmm. We're all affected by climate change. We're all affected by migration resulting from drought, resulting from climate change drought and desertification, we're all uh, suffering from supply chain backlogs mm -hmm. due to the pandemic. And with all of that, my line of work, especially we've all had to borrow. There's no, there's very few countries if they had the ability to it, that did not go into more debt to take Norway. care of the people. Yeah. So, um, with all of that, and this reckless inflationary spend, reckless inflationary spending by Trudeau, that's apparently sending us all into the poorhouse. The what it costs us to service our debt is one point five to one point six percent of GDP. You, after so you all just we fit through, yeah. After we're all we good, through. we're doing good. We're doing good. You, you're a PP in imitation there reminded me of something about how he was railing on last night about the Trudeau government is going to ram through C11 and they just did it. They just forced it through. I'm like, well, they're a minority government, so they can't really ram through anything to begin with. Right. And uh, I think millions of people have been confused by what Bill C11 is. Uh, and, and it's corrupted a lot of people because they've been told what certain parties want them to understand about it, which is it's going to, it's going to take away your right to earn a living on YouTube. No, it's not. It's going to, it's going to censor what you have to say. No, it's not. It's just going to enforce our charter rules, which currently exist. Things like hate speech, not allowed in this country, punishable in this country. Miss and disinformation, which we all know is detrimental to all of society. Part of the Bill C-11 to prevent that from lies. Part of that is meant to hammer down those who will hammer on others. Prevent cyberbullying. If you um, counsel someone to commit a permanent physical harm, I'm not saying the word, you know what the word is, mm -hmm. uh, you will be punished. You will, they're bringing in new laws because the laws need to catch up with the current times that we live in when it comes to the technology that we use. And like I said, a lot of people have been corrupted by uh, certain parties who seem to think that this is how you defeat a government by lying to the public en masse. And, and I've perused, I haven't read through all of Bill C-11, although there is a link online where you can read through it. And I'm like, there's nothing in the wording there that I find at, at all threatening to what we do. And as everybody knows, this is, you know, I do, I do like two music shows, this, and occasionally I, I appear on other shows and, and none of that is in jeopardy. None of it is in jeopardy. So when I see uh, people 
coming in and saying, we need to defeat this pill. It's like, I don't think you've actually read what's in the pill. Mm-hmm. And I'm upset now, to see some good people get corrupted by that. Now, here's the thing with the bill. This is not my domain of expertise mm-hmm. uh, by any stretch. Um, and that's why I keep on saying that my take on this is, you know, watch what Quebec is doing. Watch mm-hmm. what the Bloc Québécois is saying. Watch what the NDP are saying. If they're not screaming bloody murder, yeah, it's probably okay. Um, but that's, then that's you a good, that's a good like hallmark. Geist, but you have people like Michael mm-hmm. Geist, who's very, very somebody who I respect, yeah, and somebody who knows, uh, who's been interviewed by Dean many times and said, like, this is the beginning of the end of the world. Um, I don't know who to believe. Uh, yeah, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm not informed enough to be able to separate the wheat from the chaff. I'm, I'm there with you on that. I have perused the bill. Uh, I think, I think that the, the, the sky is falling mentality is the wrong way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Michael Geis has probably got a better handle on it than I will. He's much smarter than I am. But I, I believe that the sky is falling. Um, you know, dogs and cats living together. The walls are bleeding. That that sort of scare tactic that a certain political party is using, I think, is incorrect. How will this fully affect us? I don't. I don't entirely know. I know that what we do is not in jeopardy. Yep, I, I would suspect it's not as well. Only for the ver- to me, it's a bit like the IRS story in the United States, mm-hmm. where they've hired eighty-seven thousand more people, and they've said, "Oh, they're coming to get you." But we really found out is that because the department had been cut so much over the previous years that the only thing that they could afford to do was audit very poor people who can't fight mm-hmm. who can yes. who can only do it online or right so can't afford a lawyer to fight back you know there are 39 million people in canada plus closing in on 40 million x number of us are content producers do you really think that we're going to be able to high hire enough people to monitor all the production to be able to go out in your your life and censor you. Th- that would require a level of bureaucracy. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm looking at the price. If I'm gaming this out, I don't see how it's particularly possible. Uh, but again, right. It's again, it's legalese. It's fine print. It's, you know, all those other things. But uh, yeah, I don't, um, from what from my understanding was that, you know, trying to make sure that media get some compensation for the, their content that is uh, on online pl- platforms, uh, mm-hmm. making sure that uh, there's contributions to the CanCon, various CanCon funds, uh, making sure that uh, you know our legislation is there, making sure we can tax uh, the streaming services from other nations like we do the ones that originate in Canada just to eliminate the uh, unfair advantage. Um, those were the main things. I'm not sure... I don't know. It just seems to me that if we were actually regulating content, mm-hmm. that we would hear about it from the usual suspects in the country whenever we have anything that has to do with culture and representation. Yeah, so it makes me call into question all of these, the sky is falling sort of and, and we do know that. On, yeah, and we do know that on the other side, that on the pro-internet side, you know, this has always been not very regulated and we want it to remain that that's the thing we wanted to remain the wild west mm-hmm. uh, in that sense. So there is a vested interest. There is an argument that's self-serving on the other side against any re- regulation whatsoever. And like I said, I'm there's, there's only one of me and there's only so many topics I can be interested in. <laughs> well, and, and, there's <laughs> and, the- and, and this one, to be totally honest, also to be totally honest, I, I have very little interest in. Equally. So it, you got to remember too, to be honest. and this is what's important. This, we live in a democracy. So if this bill comes through and it starts to affect enough people, what do you do? Well, you write your MLA, your MPP, and your MP, and you say, we need to amend this law, and here's where we need... And that's how it gets done. Yep. Do you really think, do you really think the federal government wants to eliminate revenue? Tax revenue. People who earn millions of dollars online, and there are a lot of them, Mm-hmm. eliminate the tax revenue that they generate because they want to, con- that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So yeah, it's, um, 
as I say, kids, I have to plead ignorance and uh, wait to see how it pans out. It's the type of thing that I listen to stories of, uh, and I listen to comment from better minds than mine. Mm. Uh, but I have not been, after hearing everything on both sides, I've not been able to get a sense of whether or not this is something we need to be afraid of, or, you know, as all things, vigilance and caution, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, uh, again, it just seems to me that if I heard the, you know, the Parti Québécois in Quebec really losing their minds over this or the CAQ, um, then, then you'd have my attention. And, and I, at the moment I don't. So, um, yeah, it, 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 and you know what? We, we all use shortcuts, right? This, this is a thing, right? I know mm-hmm. everything. So it's like, I can't know everything, but I know this person knows, so I'm going to rely on that person, what that person says, right? I know enough to know that this person knows what they're talking about. That's a shortcut because that person could be wrong on any given day, right? So yes. we all take shortcuts in life. Uh, we all take these mental shortcuts to get through. There's so many things to know. Uh, there's so many things to worry about. I'm worried about the state of my democracy. I'm worried about, you know, one of our national parties seeming uh, <laughs> to be uh, perfectly content with to dispense with democracy, <laughs> uh, yeah. meeting with a, <laughs> meeting with a people who are, you know, closet well not so much closet but proud to be closet closet nazis i guess mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um i'm yeah these are the things i'm worried about i'm worried about whether or not you know kids can go to school and not get targeted because they're different i'm worried about people being able to read what they want to read and i'm worried Agreed. about you know these are these are things I'm, I'm more concerned about. So, you know, how the government is going to regulate the internet for, um, yeah, again, I figure if I have an issue, like you say, we'll, we'll have time to, uh, to address it later. And, and legislation is like that as well. I mean, there's very few, very rarely are you going to get a piece of legislation that's going to be perfectly right the first time you're going to get it. And then you're going to make some adjustments. And sometimes it's not even the law. Sometimes it's just the regulations under the law that need to be mm-hmm. adjusted and that type of stuff. So, you know, it's, let, let's give this time to play out because, there's there's a lot of people with a lot of vested interests. I, I I think even I mean I would even assume that the internet service providers and those companies, if content was going to be regulated to a point where people would say screw it, why make content, mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't be happy either, and we'd be hearing from the bill, hearing from them on this bill in that capacity. So, yeah, wait wait. The thing is in politics, right? We often think that somebody's puts the mic in your face so you have to respond it's not the wait case. and see is <laughs> you know i understand there's a lot of things panicking right now so yeah but there's a process in place at the moment i trust the process i'm going to wait to see how it pans out and if we need to make adjustments we will is a perfectly good answer do we um and people don't use it often enough should we address like i i'm, I'm trying to get the temperature of the room here right now because i'm I'm in a really, you ever, you know, wake up and, and you just feel a sense of blissful, chill, relaxation over your body, your mind, your, that's where I am right now on three hours sleep, which is weird because I should be cranky and tired and I am tired, but I'm, I'm blissfully tired. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy right now. I'm very, very happy right now, which is a wonderful place. Does it have something to do with it? Uh, Friday, uh, I had such a wonderful time last night. It was, it, it, you know, got to meet some new people, which is always a joy. Checked out a new venue, got out of the house. You know, it was, it was a combination of things. So I'm feeling that blissful sort of warmth. Anybody, maybe, maybe this, I'm going to, I'm going to pose a question here and then I'll go with where I'm going. Uh, does anybody in this group of people do yoga? And if you do, Every time I did a, uh, like a two hour class the next day around, around this time, I felt exactly what I'm feeling like this sense of warmth, uh, like a comfortable blanket and a, and a cup of hot, whatever beverage, just joyful, blissful happiness. I always felt that like the next morning after a heavy yoga uh, class, that's how I'm feeling right now. So I'm trying to get a relational thing in there. That's where I'm feeling right now. So the, what I'm trying to ask you is because I'm feeling so happy and so good and it's Friday and, and I know you're in a blissful, happy, joyful mood, mm. do we want to address PP and his response uh, en français uh, to will he eliminate the dental program? Yes, please. 
and the smugness in which he responded to that reporter. Yes, yes, let's do that. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm actually in a good mood that I can tolerate that quite well. Okay. So I, I, I've got the, uh, I've got the link right here, and um, I'm, I'm going to play it. It's, it's from CPAC, so there's absolutely no danger of us getting into any sort of trouble for this. Because, uh, you know, sometimes you, you, you play something like that's a copyrighted content. This is CPAC. This is owned by every Canadian. Right. So for those of you who haven't seen this, whoops, let's just bring it up on the screen. I want you to pay attention to his body language and, and his tone and the way he speaks down to the female reporter. Oh, of course, female. Whoops. Hang on. Sorry, I screwed up. <laughs> I'll start it over. Yeah, I'll start over. Hang on a sec here. And do this. And there we go. And I'll open up the volume a little bit more as much as I can because there's it's limited with what's in the clip. But here we go. No, 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 Garde quoi? Il ça existe pas. Vous, vous voulez? Non, non, vous, vous voulez? Vous voulez? His dismissive speaking down, like, it's not little lady. You know how I say it all the time. I really want to smack his smug face. After that, <laughs> dude, my blood was boiling, boiling. Boiling. Yep, yep. Absolutely. I, I, I hear you. Um, now, here's the thing with that one for me is that um, he's laughably, laughably maintaining that he would only be able to say whether he'd rip up the plan once the program was already fully implemented and running for enough time for him to decide if it needed to be. How convenient. Yeah. It's also bullshit. It's also bullshit. There is a plan. He's saying, and remember, this is a political party that ran in an election promoting a program that had not yet been voted on on Parliament. Mm-hmm. Right, that job skills program funding hadn't even been voted on, and they were promoted it as a done deal. He was part of the government who did that. This plan has been voted on. Yes, it has. The first phase of the plan, which is a temporary measure while they're actually building the full program, is in place. We've just announced the second phase of the three-phase plan that is about to start. By the end of this year, I believe, those two things will then be canceled and rolled into the actual program where the third phase will happen and mm-hmm. everybody under $90,000 will be able to qualify. So one's under $90,000. So, uh, so there uh, households under 90000 Households under 90000 yes. So there is a plan. He says the plan. There is no plan. There is a plan. The mm-hmm. program, full official, because if we're being super pedantic, the program doesn't exist because right now we have a temporary measure that will be rolled in to create a program. That was, but there is a plan. And the plan's already started. And the whole premise of his answer is that the plan does not exist. There is no plan. So this is this is yet of another th- that, that that's right up there with his uh, his uh, treatment uh, for addicts thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to launch a series of lawsuits that will probably take 15 years to get through the court system. That's the part I'm not saying. Uh, I'm going to fight people that have like tons of the, like the only group 
out of all the groups that have probably lawyered up as much as the government, the pharmaceutical companies. And once we get that money, 15 years from now when I'm no longer in government and maybe even possibly in jail, um, then we'll build all these treatment. To, this is right up there again. It's like, well, the dental plan, well, well, well the dental full plan. program doesn't already exist yet. I mean, I can't tell you whether or not I would take it apart, but well, but, 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 but. You said you were going to take away the child care program before it was implemented everywhere, so why are you gun-shy now? Why, 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 why be so timid now, Skippy? Hmm. I'm... Hmm. Are, are you in awe of the leadership yet? No, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I can't say no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Don't ask me for an answer. No, 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 no. But I'm a leader. I'm your next prime minister. Send me money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Pull the Come. other leg and it plays jingle bells. I just, <laughs> this guy, this guy, I swear, I swear, man, uh, is it, like, it, go, go, go ahead. Well, it's, it's, he's a cartoon character. I mean, like, like, and, and now, and he's on, he's on infant formula as well now. You've been talking about that too. He's gone back to that well. So you got to. <laughs> Dale Smith, I I love this so much. <laughs> if you put it up there, Mister Grizzly. So, is the conservative position that the federal government should create a nationalized infant formula producer? <laughs> I like Catherine on the bottom too. How it goes? One problem: Canadians encounter is identified. Two opposition demands feds under liberals fix it. Three real people that can fix it are private business or municipal or provisional governments. Four or feds cha changing existing structure requiring unanimous cooperation by some of the people listed above. <laughs> so yes, so apparently now we're going to nationalize the airports. We have to nationalize the Bank of Canada. We have to nationalize infant formula producer, and it just made me think of his like slogans. Remove the gatekeepers, make more power for formula, bring home the baby paychecks, like my slogan, sign my petition, send me money. <laughs> You're laughing because it's true. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> bring home those powerful baby paychecks. <laughs> What is a powerful paycheck, by the way? I think that it's I think it's sort of like Pac-Man. If you crumple it up like this and then eat it, it becomes like a power pellet, and then all of a sudden like you could like move faster through the world. Oh, okay. And or he's gonna bring it home. Fly? He's gonna bring it home, though. He's gonna bring home powerful paychecks. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. Is, is, that doesn't like even make sense. Is he auditioning for Les Miserables? <laughs> bring it home. Bring it home, bring it home. Bring it home. What are we bringing home, and do we want to catch it? Is there a cream for it? <laughs> yes, it's only two hundred and fifty dollars a tube, though. So yes, but it's like, what, what is it with these things? Like Aaron O'Toole, are you with me? It's like, well, let's bring home this. Let's bring home powerful paychecks. Let's bring home. Let's bring home. It's like. Where do they get these? I don't. I honestly, I don't know. We're going to make life better. Are you with me? Well, I'm with anyone who wants to make life better. Yeah. Who would <laughs> be against how. that? Tell me how. <laughs> Share with me. Building more homes for people to live in. Okay, sure. I'm down with that. Mm. Tell me how. <laughs> Got to remove the gatekeepers. Okay. Tell me how. <laughs> and then how does it work once we remove the gatekeepers? <laughs> it's, 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 I'm just, tell me how. <laughs> I'm I'm not, I, I don't think I'm being too demanding. <laughs> Am I? Or unreasonable? No, not at all. 
So it's just like, okay, well, I, I understand removing the gatekeeper part, but then what happens when no one's manning the gate? I mean, he's literally at airports where there are gates, literal gates, saying to remove the gatekeepers. Well, it's, he's going to nationalize. I mean, if there's much place, you're going to have a gatekeeper at the damn airport. Remove the gatekeepers. Why can't Trudeau get groceries into people's carts? Why can't he get food on the shelves? Why can't Justin Trudeau hurry up the lineup at the airport? So your suggestion is to nationalize everything, completely destroying the free market. <gasps> Wouldn't that be uh, communism? Wouldn't that be um, dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Before we even get to communism, wouldn't that just be dumb? Well, of course, but the thing is, it's like all of his supporters scream about Trudeau, the communist dictator, which those are completely diametrically opposed. He's a fascist communist dictator. Three things that can't exist in the same time and space. Um, and, and yet then they have this guy who is literally spouting things from the communist manifesto. The government has to make sure you can get affordable groceries in your cart and that the, the stores of the shelves are full of groceries and, and the lineups at the airport are something like you, you are literally preaching communism. Literally. The government takes over everything. It's all owned by the state and everybody has enough. That's what communism is. But they don't. They don't understand. If they don't like it, they'll call it communism. And then they, they'll turn around and accuse me of saying, well, everybody you hate is a Nazi. No, no, Nazis are Nazis. Yeah, That's it. Uh, just because I don't like a person doesn't mean I'm going to refer to them as a Nazi. Yeah. Christine yeah. Anderson, Nazi, proud of it. Yeah, I, I dislike all Nazis, but not everyone I dislike happens to be a Nazi. <laughs> I, I can go. dislike people for a whole lot less than being a Nazi. <laughs> It isn't that's difficult. That's not the bar you need to reach for me to start just liking you. Trust me, it kicks in way before that. Well, this this is this is a conversation I had last night. They, you know, somebody was remarking about how during the occupation, well, it wasn't as bad as World War One. That's the bar, really. <laughs> that's the bar. Oh, okay, I okay. see. Uh, no problem. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody had it worse than you, so you should be thankful. But I, I am thankful. It, it it just reminds me that uh, the, those uh, those images that we're seeing on uh, that meme there that we're seeing the, those people dining in uh, in Paris. And it's like and there's like this fire going on. <laughs> there's like yeah, everything everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine. This one here, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is it. This is yeah. This is it. Bienvenue en like, France. Yeah, it says there's this little couple there that's opening the chair, just going to sit down. These other two, they're just talking like nothing's going on. You know? Totally so, nonplussed. Yep. Yep. We saw that one the other day. There was another clip like that. I think it was someone at a Starbucks who had unfortunately gotten stabbed. And that was outside of Vancouver and nobody did anything. Yeah. And somebody, you see somebody sitting in the corner, like, just like, yeah. this guy bleeding out on the ground. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. This is, this like is this. the world we're living in right now. <laughs> right. Right? Uh, just that that's the thing that makes me wonder every now and then. It's like, uh, I mean, again, I'm hardwired for optimism and I like to believe the, in the best in our fellow humans. And then every now and then I can see, okay, so you're just going to keep on having that latte while somebody bleeds out 10 feet away from you. Uh, okay, maybe we are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Me, some, some days, maybe. I had placed too much faith in the human race. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, we have a couple of other little tidbits here and there. Uh, so uh, run through. Um, but it seems that there was a, another break in attempt at uh, the residence of a senior official from the prime minister's team. Uh, last December, there was an unsuccessful attempt to break into the home of Katie Telford. Oh, and yeah. it seems that yesterday, yeah, I only found out about that yesterday as well, but it seems that a few days ago there was a successful attempt to break into the home of national security advisor, Jody Thomas. Hmm. And a number of personal documents and items were stolen. <sighs> G 
conveniently, the China China story seems to have died down all of a sudden with the threat of the lawsuit. And then there's a break in at the National Security Advisor's home where personal documents and items were stolen. I'm just going to leave that up there because I do not have any additional information. But that happened. Interesting to note. Let's wait to see if there's a new developments on China, China, China coming up soon. Yeah, they they let, they let that one slip away from the headlines really quick, didn't they? Yep. Uh, also, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church officially repudiated the doctrine of discovery, uh, which is a really big deal. And uh, for this institution, that is major. Um, and it was something that was requested by the indigenous community in Canada. And they had hoped that that would be done when the Pope came here last July to deliver his papal apology for the role of the church with residential schools. However, even though this is a big deal, um, the Roman Catholic Church appeared to pull the same trick they did when they apologized for residential mm-hmm. schools, blaming the quote unquote, well, not quote unquote, but blaming the terrible people uh, who did those things in the name of the church, but not necessarily saying that the church wanted this outcome or directed or advised or had any role itself in playing. Again, um, I know people take the steps that they can take at certain times and when, and, you know, when the Pope is limited to how far he can go by pressures on the inside as well. Uh, but it was the church. <laughs> yeah, it was the church. It was the I, church. I, I have a new clip for you, sir. So yes. since, since I just played a clip a few minutes ago that it made my blood boil over PP being a smug, obnoxious, arrogant little prick... Call a spade a spade. Uh, mm-hmm. I've got one that will do the exact same thing for PP supporters for the prime minister. Yeah, okay. you know, we got to we got to have a yin yang. You know, we show yep. we show that we're going to show this. So hold on to your hats, kids, because this one this is pretty heavy duty. This is some heavy duty stuff. Um, it's quite shocking, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah, just check it out. <laughs> You know, and better than Bohemian Rhapsody, he was on key. Yeah, (laughs) that's just up the street from me, by the way. That's um, I worked in on that project. In that, here, let me just put up a still from it. You can see. there's the interior. It used to be a bank. It was built in the 30s, and I worked on that project too. Uh, completely redone, this beautiful building built in 1930. It was originally a bank of Montreal, if memory serves. Anyway, now it's a multi purpose venue that serves all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the restaurant that's gone in there. Uh, I want to say Riviera. I think it's Riviera. But okay. it's, it's used for a lot of things. Anyway, yeah, I thought, you know, if we showed PP at his worst, we should probably show our prime minister. Um, having a good at time best. with, yeah, at his best with the prime, yes. you know, with uh, with that that good fella from Newfoundland there, that good lad there, Alan Doyle. It's a good guy. One of the good guys. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pope's fashion. Have you seen sense. this? Have you have you seen this picture? Yes, I have. Okay, it's uh, Pope Francis wearing a Michelin very, man. Very, yeah, as a Michelin man, a very very stylish, uh, puffy jacket. Uh, well, turns out. It's a deep fake. Oh, is it? Yes. Huh. It is a deep fake. Because here we are, the Pope, like mm-hmm. doing like rapper poses in the puffy jacket. <laughs> so it was a deep fake. It's like, yeah, it's like, nope, but I did fall for puffy jacket Pope. A lot of people <sighs> fell for it. Uh, so he wasn't in a puffy jacket at all? At all. Oh. This is all AI. Wow. All AI. That's a little scary. 
that's where we are at. Yeah, exactly. In 2023. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Imagine how much better it's going to get. Uh, like I said, we, we might very soon end up in a world where uh, we don't know what's real and what's not. And we don't know who to go ask to find out what's real or not, especially with everybody making it a, a hobby to gleefully say, you can't trust anybody. You can't trust legacy media. You can't trust the independent media. You can't trust this media. You can't trust your eyes. You can't, who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes and all these types of things. And all that stuff is already getting better. So it's, uh, and, uh, as we mentioned on the show before, Michelle Rempel Garner appears to have made this, um, her, uh, one of her personal issues. And, uh, she speaks mm-hmm. about it actually quite intelligently and eloquently. There's been an interview with her on uh, Peter Mansbridge's The Bridge a couple of weeks ago. I would highly recommend that uh, people listen to it, even if you uh, don't uh, are not a big fan of uh, Michelle Rempel Garner herself uh, on this particular op- uh, topic. She knows what time it is. She's not a stupid person. She's not a stupid Look, person. Oftentimes, I absolutely despise her politics, and sometimes we're in lockstep with one another. That's how it is with every politician. Now, that being said, I find I'm not in lockstep with her very often on many things, but I, I have to respect her intelligence and the amount of effort and, and work she puts into reading about a subject. She wrote an article about the, the World Economic Forum, the WF, a few years ago when she attended it. And she's like, the sky is not falling, the world is not on fire, settle down. But Skippy, who believes in freedom, 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 would not allow any of his MPs to go to the World Economic Forum if he was Prime Minister. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's the the freedom in that? Freedom to live as I tell you to. Uh, I have some other news for you. I just, I just, just hot off the wire. Okay, if you want to, yeah. Yeah, it's real quick. You'll you'll like this. No worries, no worries. For the first time ever, the Vanier Cup is coming to Kingston, Ontario, and the city will have the chance to show off its hosting skills as it hosts back-to-back championships games. So there, K Town going to host the Vanier Cup. I might have to come down for that because I'm a you know I'm a big fan of, uh, of the Vanier Cup. Uh, it's it's the uh, championship for the um, Canadian uh, Inter. Well, it's they've changed it. It's not uh, CIAU anymore. It's something else now. I can't. Yeah, remember. I, can't, I don't remember what it's called now. Yeah. Anyway, here, I'll put the link to that um, in the chat. There we go. Boom. And I'm going to open it up on my own so I can have it here to read later. Is it time to hit the pause button on AI? Yep. So this is an article that uh, Michelle uh, Rempel wrote for her Substack, but it is uh, connected with uh, the bridge with uh, the Peter Mansbridge uh, episode. And uh, I will try to find that as well uh, for you and uh, give it to you, Mr. Grizzly, so that you can post it uh, while we're uh, chatting uh, some more. Um, Other things going on in the news, uh, if you're worried about uh, Silicon Valley Bank and the state of the banking system, it seems that there has been a plan for it to be purchased. First Citizens Bank in the United States has, uh, it's a rally, uh, North Carolina-based bank, has entered into a purchase and assumption agreement for all the deposits and loans at Silicon Valley Bank, uh, which are estimated at $72 billion. They will be getting it for 165 I would have thought it would have been like a buck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does seem that things have been stabilizing as well, uh, based uh, on what the stock markets have been doing uh, this week, uh, and uh, the U.S. banks in particular. So things oh, okay. seem to seem to have been stabilized as well. So we might not get that contagion, although um, we still don't know what's on the balance sheets of all the regional banks yet. So there still could be some surprises, but for now it seems that uh, the measures that have been taken appear to have contained the issue. Um, Just wanted to let you know that I have uh, heard uh, from our guest today uh, that uh, was supposed to be here, apologized, uh, said uh, had to jump straight into dad's work. (laughs) Hey, that's cool. That's life. That's life. Uh, uh, He's uh, committed to coming on uh, Monday. So uh, we will have him then. Um, Yep. Uh, So we, uh, we were just chatting here and um, yep. So there you go. Uh, We'll take care of that. So uh, sorry, apologies for that kits, uh, but our our interview uh, with the, President and CEO of Main Street Main Street Research Company, where we will talk about polling and uh, some stuff having to do with uh, um, 
attempted uh, political influence by the People's Republic of China because he has some thoughts on that too. Um, that will be on Monday. Uh, but it doesn't matter because we're here together and we're having a great time. Um, so hell yes. yeah, we are. Yeah, hell yeah, we are. So that's the thing with Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, that is uh, very important, so that you know. Just if you're, you know, you're, you've been panicking or just monitoring your investments a little, clo- a little more closely lately, you can breathe a bit. Um, oh, I got something hot off the wire. Okay, please. Let's uh, do it. Wow, this is. I did not see this coming. And let's see if I can. I don't know if I can blow it up at all. Um, I'm gonna. Oh wait, I know what I can do. Just a sec. See if I can blow this. I was. This is a surprise. Um, possibly should have suspected it to a certain degree, but nevertheless, uh, here we are. Hot off the wire, Aaron O'Toole announces he will not seek re-election. He's Whoa. Stuck in yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bowmanville, Ontario today, the Honorable Aaron O'Toole, member of parliament for Durham, announced that he will not seek re-election and will resign his seat at the end of the spring session. He announced the news in Durham during a speech to the Clarington Board of Trade. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that's big news. That is okay. So wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So we have Taze and Savage leaving and not running again in Alberta. We have Fullerton who left in Ontario. We have Alain Reyes and Senator Jean Guy Dagenet who left the party soon after PP. And now we have Erin O'Toole who we haven't had a chance to talk about it on the show, but who had been making some uh, media availabilities over the past few months, uh, saying how he would handle certain things a little differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now he's lost Aaron. And Aaron is like, like at the end of the spring session. Like, I'm not sticking around. There's trouble. Yeah. There's trouble. Rats, rats are leaving the sinking ship. There's trouble. The former, he's losing the former leader. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he did kind of torture Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, don't get me wrong, but there's another former leader that's in his core team. Mm-hmm. Sheer, the guy who just can't quit the public teeth. Teat. <laughs> It's like, not teeth. Um, but uh, he's going to... No, no, he'd take that, that away he's from He's got you. his teeth marks into the public teeth, that's for sure. Been sucking so hard on it. Um, so, yeah. Um, wow. Wow. I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to... Well, I mean, kind of happy. Mm-hmm. Well, the party's imploding. The party's... And yeah. I, I think I That's think what, he did go. not admonish or kick the MPs out of caucus who sat with a Nazi. I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of people. And I think it's going to be a trickle. I don't think it's okay. going to be a deluge. I think it'll be a trickle over the next several coming weeks and months of people just leaving because they're, as, they're trying to exit gracefully, may, maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, especially as he's showing that he's not able to pivot. Because what, it's, yeah. it's September now, right? He was elected, he became the leader in September. We're in March now. We're, we're starting April. October, November, December, January, February, March. April, seven months. He's mm. not growing. No. Yeah. He's not growing in the job. He's just doubling down on whatever it is he brought to it. Um, yeah. I guess some people don't want to be part of that. Can you blame them? Wow. No, I well, can't. Didn't, didn't Aaron O'Toole had said um, he needed to try and, and bring the party closer to the center because he felt it had swung too far right. And we absolutely, I mean, I agree with him. Yeah. And but look what him. happened. Him trying to do that, he got torpedoed by the people yeah, in but he should have been position authentic. to do it. That's his problem. Yeah, he, his problem is that yeah. he was on, he ran for that leadership because when we commented it while he was doing it, mm-hmm. as Dr. Jekyll, when two years before, three years before, when he was when Sheer won it and he ran against him, he was Mister Hyde. When he went against Sheer, he was a true progressive conservative, and then two, three years later, he had changed his whole values wholesale and said, "I'm a true blue conservative." Well, it's like, well, but without mentioning one thing about his conversion mm-hmm. 
to true blue conservatism from wasn't authentic. And then he said he would do all these things. And then in the campaign, he tried to do that pivot to the middle thing and flip flop so many times and did tumbling passes worthy of Cirque du Soleil and got eaten alive by his own party. And then yeah. more unceremoniously dumped than was Mulcair. And that one was pretty embarrassing. So, I mean, I can understand he's going, but like again, it's it, it's 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 just another day of media questions that are inconvenient for Skippy at a time at which, if that party had a minimum of discipline, professionalism, and organization, they would have the liberals completely on the ropes at this time. But yeah. they'd rather win the nine oh second again leading more credence to my theory that conservatives don't really care if they win or not. They just care that the money keeps on rolling and they keep on going, getting government subsidized travel and offices and staff. I guess. And if they happen to get their on the purse strings too, then even better than they just have a bigger party, but it just, it doesn't look like they're here just for the party. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I, I can't understand this continuing to embarrass yourself in public in this manner if you've just decided that we don't care what we look like so long as the money keeps rolling in. Well, I mean, it exposes who they really are. And I've known who they are for a long time. But now the rest of the country is is starting to see it for what they are. Which, you know, hey, continue to to, uh, burn down the bridge that you're standing on. Yep, yep. Um, more little interesting tidbits of news there. I like this because I'm getting to put in things that I've collected over the past few weeks, but really had no time to mention. Um, Airbnb, uh, after that event that happened where there was a uh, building in old Montreal that was basically, well, we found out uh, we're having illegal rental units, uh, was destroyed by a fire. Uh, uh some people are confirmed dead, I believe three or four, and three are still missing. Um, mm-hmm. Airbnb says that it will uh, pull these types of listings from their sites, uh, any listing that does not have a permit from the Quebec government. So it seems that in the province of Quebec, if you have an Airbnb property uh, or that type of property, you have to actually get a permit uh, to be able to use that as a business, which seems like a very smart idea, and I do not know why that is not national. Um, Airbnb also says that it will give the Quebec government access to some of its data to help enforce safety measures. Um, please, let's take this national. Yeah. That should be a national standard for all these types of services. It's not let's get surgery. some. Let, let, let's get some permits, either from the provincial governments or the municipalities, so that they can uh, make up some... Uh, lost hotel revenue and tax on that and then make sure that uh, the people not from the Airbnb side but the people that are buying these properties and are operating them as a uh, rental or temporary rental units have to meet some minimal safe safety standards like for example having fire alarms at work mm-hmm. and not having illegal rental units in buildings that are not supposed to have rental units at all I'm not zoned for that somebody's going to go to prison over this I guarantee you somebody's going to go to go down because the province of Quebec uh, will not let this one go. No. They won't. No, no. Um, if you are a fan of soap operas, uh, The Young and the Restless has just recently celebrated its 50th anniversary this week. Uh, and it will only, it will, and a General Hospital will be turning 60 soon. It appears, I did not know this, but that there are now only four soap operas still running. Oh, really? Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, there were tons of them. Yeah, Edge and I had another world. Like, and every young TV station hour. would have four <laughs> of their oh, own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you had the nighttime soaps, if you included like the Knott's Landings and the Dallas's and the Falcon Crests, but like the daytime soaps, it seems that there are only four daytime soaps left. So what, General? YNR? Days of Our Lives? Uh, is that I, still on? Is Days of Our Lives still on? I, I don't know. Another world is that still on? No, another world isn't on. Another world was yeah. my mom's favorite, and I yeah, that was my mom's too. Canceled. And then it hit Rachel. Spun, off the, spun off. Yeah, Rachel McCory. Yes, and Max. You can go in <laughs> another world. That's all you ever hear. Getting so you can't stay home and enjoy a bottle of beer between Rachel and the jackpot. I'm slowly going mad. I've seen people before possessed, but girl, you got it bad. That was uh, <laughs> that was uh, Rex Hemian 
in Newfoundland back in the 70s. Speaking yes. of Newfoundland, my friend, it oh, yes. is the 74th anniversary uh, since uh, Newfoundland became Canada's 10th province. Ah, uh, 74 well, years young. You're one sexy 74 year old Newfoundland. I will tell you what. Well, yeah. 74. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> She's a lot older than that. <laughs> Just been a member of the Confederation since uh, 1949. So happy birthday. She had some work done. Uh, it's looking good, though. Looking good. <laughs> mm. All right. Um, I don't know if it's still going on, uh, but earlier this week, uh, there was a transit strike in the Fraser Valley in British Columbia. There's about 200 drivers who say that they are underpaid. Uh, because in uh, the province of British Columbia, uh, basically, for anything that's not in the greater Vancouver area, there's a company uh, that is basically hired to provide that service, and it's called First Transit. Uh, but it seems that uh, they are not providing pensions or pay that is equivalent to transit groups in the same region area, and some drivers are being paid up to 32% less. Uh, First Transit says that it's offered 16%, but that's still only half <laughs> how much less they've been paying people for a while. Uh, so um, we don't know how that's going to resolve at the moment. Uh, and BC Transit says that they're only monitoring negotiations at the moment, not participating. Uh, but that's leaving about 350,000 people in the, the Fraser Valley area without public transit. Um so, yeah. And uh, First Transit is an American company to which BC Transit is contracting out the drivers. Um, so let's hope that that gets resolved soon. If that isn't resolved already, uh, I hadn't heard more news about that since I uh, documented it. Mm -hmm. um, in some not so great news, um, Canada is slipping among near peer countries when it comes to infant mortality. In the 1980s, like according to the OECD, which is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Canada was among the top 10 nations in the world when it came to having low infant mortality rates. But now we rank 30th among 38 wealthy, the 38 wealthy nations that the OECD monitors. We slipped from top 10 to 30th. There are about 4.4 deaths per thousand births now in Canada, and it is more than double that among Indigenous communities. Dr. Andrew Bissuri, who is a social medicine expert with the University of Health Network uh, in Toronto, University Health Network Toronto in Toronto, says that poverty and systemic racism are driving higher rates of infant mortality than should ever be acceptable. It's... Uh, no coincidence that countries that are faring better in these measures spend more on public education, housing, and social spending. They spend more on healthcare in certain areas, especially in area access for maternal health, for mental health, prenatal care, and primary care. And York University's researcher Dennis Raphael said, increasingly, public health researchers and advocates are recognizing that many of the crises we are experiencing of precarious work, of unaffordable housing, falling further behind other countries in infant mortality, are related to decisions that Canadians have accepted that we can't afford to take care of each other. People are ringing the alarms. Mm. It's troublesome. That that makes me sad because that was always something, you know, when I was comparing, you know, mm. our healthcare system to the American healthcare system. You know, they're saying, "Ah, oh, you know, well, look at us on infant, infant mortality. Look at us on, on uh, mothers surviving childbirth mm. as well, but not just infant mater, mothers surviving. Look at all these numbers and look at our, you know, why are we so much further? It's like, well, why, why, why is Bosnia and Herzegovina doing better than the United States on this measure? Yeah. Right. And uh, well, we've allowed ourselves to slip." We need to rectify that quickly. Well, then, okay, I'm going to posit something here. Not okay. necessarily a theory, but just sort of a, I'll throw it out there, connect the dots however you see. We have a, a the federal liberals are in charge federally. Mm -hmm. Most of the provinces in this country are run by conservatives who scream for tax dollars for health care, but have been missing billions of dollars 
from federal funds over the last few years, and all of a sudden infant mortality has gone up. They won't pay healthcare workers to work in this in the public system. So now that they're funding private for-profit hospitals and clinics, and then hiring away people from the public system to pay them twice, but we still have a rise in, you know. It, I'm just putting the dots out there. You connect them however you see. Yep. <sighs> can I can I lighten it for a sec? Please. I gotta, I gotta lighten it because that was heavy. <laughs> Wife, you ate a two pound bag of Reese's eggs. Me, if you deduct the bag and wrappers, it's only one point eight nine pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Theo's Theo's uh, Theo's uh, editor um, political cartoon for the day. More election meddling. Mayor's race, Toronto. He's he's pictured as Doctor Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Doctor Evil? Or Dr. Cla- oh no, that's Doctor Evil. Yeah, I was wondering Dr. if it was Doctor Claw yeah. for a second there. No, no, no he's, got, he's got the kitty cat and the yep. gray suit, and yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dr. Uh. Evil. <laughs> oh, and here's one. Here's one from Francis Maxwell that I just caught off, off the wire. Um, the party of family values, in, in, in quotations, and law and order, in quotations, want you to know they're very upset that a thrice-married, twice-impeached, coup-plotting, insurrection-inciting, kitty-grabbing sycophant is being criminally indicted and that it doesn't represent the America they support. Well... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's uh, here's another thing, right? Uh, I, I was thinking about this this morning as he's being in, indicted, and you know, and there's other things too, right? Uh, e. Jean Carroll, that lady, um, who who is an uh, author who has accused him of basically rep- raping her in mm-hmm. a dressing stall at Bergdorf's. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about like him saying that thing, like he's saying like he wouldn't have raped her because she wasn't his type. Thus, maybe implying that if he finds someone their type, then he does rape them because he will rape them. Something like twelve allegations, <laughs> and I'm just like thinking. It's like, it's like I'm gay, and I know you don't grab the kitty. No, you don't do that. <clears throat> you cajole the kitty. You got to remember. You caress a thrice kitty. married, you a thrice married, m- m- multiple bankruptcies. Um, man who was raw dogging a porn star while his current wife and that's how he's referred to my current wife yes was at home with his infant child yes and lord knows family values yes yes and again not saying anything <clears throat> against stephanie clifford or karen mcdougall because but when you're mm. raw dogging you risk bringing presence home mm. yes oh yeah yeah and that's no 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 commentary towards Stormy Daniels whatsoever. That's not the case. No. No, we're not we're not because we're not we're not shaming. He's not anybody. doing that only with her. Mm-hmm. Like this, and not not only bringing back presents back home, but if you're raw dogging, um, you could be given presidents presidents <laughs> presidential presents. Uh, you could be giving pre- presents to a whole lot of people. Unwanted gifts. You're a vector of disease. Yeah. So anyway, but yes, yes. Everybody is listening. If you've not been close to a kitty, don't grab the kitty. Never grab the kitty. Right? It's called sexual assault. <laughs> Just, uh, man, I tell you. Um, <laughs> we, should we should we make t-shirts, Jen? I <laughs> can't. I got chlamydia from DJT. All the STIs. <laughs> See, now I like the idea of that shirt because of what it says to DJT, but about DJT, but I'm not quite sure I would probably admit that I caught it. <laughs> because I had I would have to admit what I did to catch it from me. <laughs> I wouldn't be ashamed of the chlamydia. I'd be ashamed of how I acquired it. <laughs> I did what? <laughs> Is there a video proof of this? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Um, here's something that happened that made me happy, Mr. Grizzly. 
if you, you would sure. put it up there. It's just a little video clip here. Um, I don't see anything. You should, you should see it now. No. There we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec here. I just, my computer's dragging right now. So okay. bear with me while so I get this together. This and is veteran American broadcaster Katie Couric, a legend in her field. Mm-hmm. Um, take a look. I think probably in broadcast journalism, it's quite different because while men are allowed to age and look distinguished and avuncular. We lionize silver-haired right, men. Right? right. But but when women start to show their age, um, it's, it's jarring and off-putting and considered, you know, not appealing to an audience, which is so infuriating honestly and i think part of it is because we don't have real role models of women being allowed to age naturally on television or even in other forms of media i remember being tired of it well many many times over the years especially when i was in specific like war zones and you realize oh god i've i've got three weeks that's the window we have three weeks before the roots start being obvious when you have really dark hair. So um, when when it happened for me, I and I reached my max was when obviously the pandemic, uh, all of the salons were closed in Toronto, and I mentally said, "What am I doing here? This is, I don't have time." Is the bottom line? You're too busy. You're just you're covering like the weirdest, craziest story you've ever covered and that that me and I am not kidding when you're in a newsroom and all of a sudden on a Friday half the more than half the room leaves and you've got four people left and it's the city's shutting down the world is shutting down you're looking what's happening at in Wuhan and in and in um you know Parma in Italy and you're thinking what is going on here the last thing you're thinking about is your hair I am so, legend, legend, and legend. I am so happy to see Lisa Laflamme getting attention stateside. Mm-hmm. I always thought that she would be picked up by a media company here in Canada, but now I would not be surprised if she ultimately ends she up at NBC or well, she got picked up to do the the royal thing as a special contract with City. But I would be surprised if she ends up on CNN or NBC stateside. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It could happen. Yeah. Good for her. Maybe as a Canadian correspondent, or who knows? You know, like I, I don't know if she'd want to move to the U.S. Well, I mean, you know, there's a long, I don't know, long tradition of American famous American anchormen who were actually Canadian. Yes. Right. Yeah. Peter. Peter. Uh, not Peter Manchford, Sorry. Peter Jennings. Thank you. Yeah. From Ottawa. Yeah. And was it not? Um, uh, the other ones that I. As soon as I said it, I knew all their names. Lauren, well, Lauren Green, Lauren. but he, I don't think he was ever an anchor. He was the CBC announcer, yeah. the voice of doom during World War II. Yes. Lauren Green reporting live from London during the Blitzkrieg. And we have uh, J.D. Roberts. J.D. Roberts, yes. Not John J.D. Roberts John now. Roberts now. Yeah. Um, but, but there's a lot of... Like, he was with CNN, and now he's with Fox. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting decision. But uh, but yeah, it's a it was really nice to see uh, to see Lisa and and talking about it now, right? And mm-hmm. I mean, and I get that point. I get that point, right? The last thing you're thinking about in that moment is your hair. I was like, what the hell, man? Why am I spending all this time on this? I got stuff to do. There's important stuff going on. I'm busy. Like in particular at that yeah. time, like people are dying. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've been asked by a few people, why don't you die? And I'm like, because that would be a lie. And as a man, I can do this. And people go, Oh, I like it sexy. It's salt and pepper. It's this. It's this. I appreciate you. I'm like, just trying to highlight the, the double standards we have for men and women in society. I can do this and it's cool. It's sexy. It's hot. I got young guys. How'd you get your beer like that? And I'm like, just live long enough. But a woman lets her hair go to its natural color, and all of a sudden she's out of a job. Yeah. 
Not saying there's a double standard because there's just a gigantic double standard. That's all. Just not saying that there is. There is. It's huge. It's massive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I need another coffee. All right. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Um, a little bit of news uh, from Prince Edward Island, if you will, because there is a provincial election going on there. Um The election was called early by the current premier, Dennis King. He often likes to refer to himself as Denny King. Um, Sounds a little bit too much like Denny Crane when he does that to me. (laughs) When I heard that the first time, everybody knows me as Denny King. Kept on thinking of that show, uh, uh, Boston Legal, with uh, William Shatner going around going, Denny Crane, (laughs) if you've ever watched that. Um, But uh, there are 119 candidates running on Prince Edward Island uh, for this election, uh, uh, like I said, which was called a little early uh, by the premier. I guess he saw that his numbers were good and decided that uh, going early was uh, worth it for him. Um, It seems that uh, there are a little bit of controversies. Uh, Dennis King apparently went to a wake for the mayor of Alberton, which uh, prevented him from participating in a diversity forum. Uh, and advocacy group advocacy groups were not particularly happy about that. Um, and it seems that there was also a comment that the premier had made earlier on uh, in the campaign about transgender children. Um, that did not go over very well. Uh, and I'm looking for more information on that uh, because I had taken a note of that. But um, unfortunately, I cannot seem to find it at the moment, uh, which is very sad. Um, but yes, he did uh, make some uh, comments uh, about uh, the issue of transgendered uh, students uh, and um, which caused him to have to defend his uh, record. Um, uh, It says here in an article on CBC that he's defending himself in his party stance on protecting transgender rights after audio was released of him saying, quote, you don't got to drive everything down everybody's throat when asked about trans issues. So it was just a 32 second clip that was released on social media. And he's talking to an identified, unidentified voter about the community, uh, the trans community on Prince Edward Island. Um, he confirmed that the other person was one of his constituents in, de- in district 15, Brackley, Hunty River, where he's seeking re-election uh, for the April 3rd election. Uh it hasn't been made public who the constituents was uh, or where it took place. Uh, it was posted to social media by Kevin Arsenault, who ran against King uh, in the 2019 PC leadership campaign. So a more infighting among conservatives causing leaks. So former leadership. Well, rival. well, well, well. <sighs> That party, and you know, we always look at PEI when it comes to progressive conservatives as being a bastion of sanity, but um, I don't know. So uh, King says that the entire conversation had lasted about 30 minutes and people shouldn't draw conclusions about it based on a short clip. Now, um, the clip transcribed in full is the voter says, what else? Uh, Oh yeah, the trans situation. King goes, yeah. The voter says, this is happening and getting forced down Islanders' throats here. And anybody that raises their hands, especially young women, young mothers that are trying to protect their kids, and we've got someone like Paul McKean, who is the publisher of the Graphic Weekly newspaper, basically, you know, calling them crazies. Then King says something that's inaudible and says, you can't have a conversation. Voter goes, well, that's it, and it needs to be. And King cuts him off and says, in a perfect world, be happy with who you are. Go be happy with something that's inaudible. You don't got to drive everything down everybody's throat. And if they disagree, that's fine. So, I mean, there's far worse things that could be said. Uh, But wanting to live authentically, in case it needs to be said, is not driving an agenda down anybody's throat. Wanting to be who you are and having the freedom to be who you are and asking demanding that you get to be who you are is not driving an agenda down anybody's throat. 
Well, one of one of the things that I like to discuss constantly and sometimes ad nauseum, which pisses off a few people, but too bad I'm going to talk about it again, is my white privilege, my cis, het, white, male privilege. I don't ever have to consider for one split second living my life inauthentically. I don't. Hmm. Because my my life is considered the baseline, right? Right. I didn't ask for it. It's just the way I was born. I had no say in it. Now, there are millions of people who had to stay in the closet for centuries. I, I, you know, I shouldn't say centuries because there was a time when it wasn't an issue and then it became an issue. Right. Right? So not centuries, but for many, many decades. But there was a time when, you know, I mean, during the the, the, the days of uh, when, when men were more more makeup and wigs and, and clothing than women. And heels and stockings. And heels. Yeah, it's all, all of that, the, the powdered wigs. I mean, you know, it was not a big issue. It was not even considered stranger. You know, like, when did that switch take place is what I'm curious about. Yeah. And there's no mention of, of it in the Bible about how it's a sin or it's, it's not, it's never in there. It was a mistranslation. Anyway. I'm babbling. I saw something here that I thought was interesting, and I'm going to post it on the screen, and I'm like, ooh, this is a good one. This is from Sebby Wilson Jacobson from Rochester, New York, in a letter to the editor. Perhaps now is the time for all patriotic Americans who own assault weapons to donate them to Ukrainian soldiers. Mm -hmm. Somebody was suggesting that. It's like, hey, let's even give a tax credit. I'm like, wow, that's, that's, yeah, maybe it will end the, the, the terror we keep seeing on a constant and basically daily basis of, Mm -hmm. you know, another mash and it could help people fight for freedom. Yeah. Now, um, just to finish off on the, the Dennis King thing, um, he basically, uh, said that he it seems that he was recorded without his knowledge. He was not aware that he was being recorded. And he said, I think that's just indicative of a conversation you have from time to time at a door where you try to get to the bottom of where somebody is thinking and where their thought process has developed from. If I recall that conversation, it was more around the situation of the individual's thoughts of the book reading incident that was happening at the King's Playhouse in Georgetown. And that was a planned drag story time reading at the theater that became the focus of online protests in February. And it had to be postponed until April 15th, which conveniently is after the election. Um, It is important to note. My whole point, he continues, I guess would continue to be that when we have to be able in the society that we live in to have a conversation, hate and homophobia and discrimination has no place in the world, but we have to be able to have a conversation with everybody about these difficult transitional issues. Um, He said that he was trying to understand why that person had that specific opinion. Um, Now, even though he has apologized. uh, And then he said, um, uh, the people uh, at uh, PI Transgender Network uh, still found uh, the incident disappointing. They said that they understood the taped exchange as King saying he doesn't believe the transgender community is in fact shoving our existence down people's throats. Fuchs had called it a very disgusting answer and spineless given what King has said at the leaders forum Uh, on Thursday. A true ally, this is a quote, would have confronted the anti-trans rhetoric that the individual Dennis King was speaking to was putting forward and ended the conversation or made room for trying to teach this individual. Um, Our community has been and is currently under attack by anti-trans movements that are occurring on Prince Edward Island, and to not have direct and strong support from the leader of this province is unsurprising, but also extremely disappointing, which caused another apology uh, from King in a statement saying, I should have more forcefully stood up for the transgender community and I apologize unreservedly to those who are rightly offended by my lack of action. I had an opportunity in that moment to be a stronger ally for rights of transgender people and I fell short of the expectations of both myself and Islanders. I can and will do better. That is an actual apology. Yes, it is. No, I'm sorry if you're offended. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, but... I had an opportunity and I fell short. I can and will do better. Okay. Yeah, it, reminds, it kind of reminds me of this a little bit. Um, hang on, 
a second, I'll just pull this up. Let's see if I can get this Man, to go. Kit Linda yeah, asks, will you release a statement on Transgender Day of Visibility today? That would probably be a very good start. Be a good time. A good time to do it. It kind of it kind of reminds me of uh, of this uh, this right here. Oh yeah, uh, you better be careful with that. Actually. Oh yeah, uh, you better be careful with that. Actually. <laughs> No, I'm just going to throw 30 seconds and we're good. Okay. As I uh, apologize for using okay. the phrase uh, Chinese whispers, I appreciate that this is deeply offensive to the Chinese. Uh, I, I completely understand why they went totally mental. I'm delighted uh, to be joined by a mental health campaigner to witness my apology for using the phrase, they've gone mental. I can see some of you are surprised that I'm apologizing, but no. Yeah. So, yeah, that the, the reason so, why yeah. I say we have to do that is because uh, we got a warning a couple of days ago that uh, uh, the, the other episode that we used uh, <laughs> this uh, this character in um, only in Russia, however, the uh, or was yeah they, is that what it was? It was for that. It one? was for that one. Yeah, yeah. When we were using the one, oh. the, the, the other one, when because we, we showed more of it. So yeah, because mm -hmm. I was looking at thing, we never used that, and then I, I saw the title "Cop Something." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much Scott it. Scott Squad. That's yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's like, I'd I like apologize. to apologize for my Your apology. Was good. Okay, I need to apologize again. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I have something here I need to share with everybody. That um, uh, you know how I always say, I, I some people are capable of having a beer at lunch. Uh, or a glass of wine at lunch during the work day. And I'm like, I can't do that. If I have a beer at lunch, the rest of my afternoon is it's done. Right. I don't, I, there's no work left in me. Right. I've immediately switched to chill out mode and that's it. Right. Well, my friends, look what I have. Ooh, the Guinness Zero, it has finally arrived. Well, it's not arrived in Canada, but my friend just got back from his winter in Florida and he brought me back a four pack. He, he uh, brought back four pack for a bunch of us. Like we all, you know, said, get as much as you can. And he bought up everything he could find. <laughs> it's in very high demand because look, if you open it and drink it on its own, it's just like a Guinness. Now, if you put it beside another Guinness and sip a, a regular Guinness and sip this, you'll notice the difference. Right. It's slightly sweeter, but on its own, it tastes just like a Guinness. So it's like... I can have a beer at lunch. Yay. I can have a Guinness at lunch because it's got no alcohol. <laughs> That's a Friday for you, my friends. That's how you start your Friday off right. He's a happy, 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 happy man. That's a happy bear. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Grizzly, I think we have a show. What do you think? I, yeah, I, uh, I think so. I, I think so. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't think there's anything else that was really pressing that we could discuss. Do, do we did, did, did that, did that. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. I think we've got a show. Right. Fantastic. Um, kids, that's the end of this episode of the daily beaver. We hope that you enjoyed this episode because we really loved making it for you. Remember that sharing is caring and that word of mouth is priceless. So please let your peeps know about us because democracy is something that you do. Uh, yeah. Let your MPs, your MPPs, your senators, all of them know that uh, you're still demanding better. And if you happen to uh, live on PEI, um, keep an eye out today on your premiere. See what he does. If you really like this podcast, you can find us on the Cryer Media Network, as well as all Beaver Grizzly friendly platforms. Stars and reviews are greatly appreciated if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts. And if you're not, well, then if you could take some time to go to Apple Podcasts and leave us some stars and some reviews, we'd appreciate that very, very, very much. We love to hear from you. So please reach us on our Facebook. Yes, True North Eager Beaver. Oh, what, what's that? Love to share one with you someday, Mr. Grizz. Absolutely. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, Jim, Jim's a really great guy too. Um, so we'd love to hear from you. So you can reach us on our Facebook page, True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or by email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com, or leave a comment uh, on our uh, YouTube offerings. We read everything. So thank you very much. Uh, you can subscribe to our 
pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver. And we will send stuff to you as soon as it's fresh off the bandwidth. And if you are watching us on YouTube, well, why don't you smash that button and subscribe as well uh, to our true north eager beaver media incorporated YouTube channel. And that helps us out big time. We are closing in on the 200s. Um, they are not going up as fast as they have been over the past little bit. So we're like, it's like we're being teased or like at like 196 or something like this. And you're just like, well, are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? No, no, not today. So, um, but yeah, I, 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 I keep checking. It's like, it's like I, I'm going to be going to Disney World. And it's like, I'm too excited to sleep. I want to see this. <laughs> I want to see that too. Um, so if it happens, that would be great. Uh and uh, when we're talking about uh, some kits giving us some feedback, Mr. Grizzly, um, mm. we do have some wonderful feedback here. Uh, we have uh, Kit Steven on our uh, Facebook page saying, it's so nice to see your rise to fame as it is happening. Too often we only get to experience the end result when it's the journey that's most important. Best wishes and kind thoughts. So these are kits that are celebrating our success with us. Good. Thank you. The majority report uh, with Sam Cedar on the chart too. That's when we were uh, celebrating the fact that we hit hit 99. And bravo, well done, onwards and upwards, says uh, Kit Jerry. Uh, the previous con con comment was from Kit Edgison Marcus as well. Um, Kit Bernadette uh, wrote in to say, great podcast, guys, to us. So just a little Thank you. voice. We like that. And then uh, we had another kit write in and say, hello, Mr. Beaver. I really enjoy your show and was hoping to watch you on Around the Horn, my side hustle. Can you tell me what platform it's on? I've looked on YouTube, so I sent all of that. I'm also going to tune in tomorrow evening for Casual Friday with you and James, which is tomorrow evening, actually is this evening. This evening. Uh, I really enjoy your personality and I'm glad you're making the rounds. Well, thank you so very much <laughs> for enjoying my personality. I appreciate your show. It helps to wade through all the manure and try to figure out the facts. It's disappointing that we can no longer trust news media to do this. You and Mr. Grizzly have good insight and I appreciate you. Oh my. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> well, right. How's but just how's that for some love? Mm -hmm. That's well, everybody could love. use some love, right? Everybody can use some love, right? So that uh, that was from Kit Laney. So uh, thank you very much, Kit Laney. And uh, other things that we ask Kits to do every now and then, because um, I like to cook, uh, of course, and I have a little hashtag that's called Kits Who Cook that I put on when I make little creations. And sometimes the kits help with that. So over here, I was feeling like I wanted dessert. So I made some ginger snap Dutch chocolate ice cream, clean ice cream sliders because I was out of ice cream cookies. So just diabetes I just on a plate. Diabetes on a plate. Thank you, baby. Hey, I know how I'm going down. Uh, <laughs> kit Adam <laughs> sent us this one. Steak had a crunch on the outside, but was super tender. The asparagus was garlicky and spicy, and the quinoa had a quinoa had a nice creamy texture from the avocado. Acted like a palate cleanser between bites. And look at the cook on that steak. Mm, that's, I that's want some way. of that. That's that, good stuff. This is the way. This is the way. Uh, so yeah, and then of course I had to because now we had to compete. Mm. So I had to make my oven baked garlic cumin tarragon pork chop with fried rice. So what are you eating, kids? <laughs> show me what you're eating. Sh show it to me on your plate, though. Don't show me. I'll seafood. have a barley sandwich later. Don't show me seafood. <laughs> show it on your plate. Ah, <laughs> uh, kids. Uh, this is your eager beaver telling you <laughs> that it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom to set us off for a wonderful weekend? Well, I don't know if it's words of wisdom, but a friend of ours from, from the network, um, uh, Emmeline. Okay, yes, yes, She's yes, been yes. on James shows a couple of times. Yes, yes, yes. Well, she just, yes. uh, according to her, she says, yeah. hang on, let me just double check. I want to make sure I get this right. She says, it feels amazing to cross off a lifetime bucket list goal. And let me show you that goal. Okay. Her bucket list goal, Emma Rose, or Emmeline, as we've come to know her. She's 
going to be on the Naked News. No way. Good for yeah. her. Yeah, I think that's kind of awesome. Uh, I have a friend that was on the Naked News many years oh, yeah? ago. Yeah. 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 Male, uh, one, one of the male readers. Many, many well, years. You, it's, you know, it's, it's shot in Toronto, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it still Wait, existed. I thought it was way to a go, thing Emily. for a while and then it disappeared. But yeah, if, oh, that's still what for, if, if that was a goal of yours, you're pursuing it, then way to go. Well, and but I remember when it first came out, my buddy says, you got to check this out. And I'm like, okay, what is it, porn? He goes, no, it's the news, hard-hitting news read by somebody in the nude. I'm like, what? So the first time I watched it, I was like, holy crap. And And who was her name? Victoria... She was the very first anchor they hired. I'm like, she has a spectacular um, anchor voice for, for radio and television because, I mean, she was a very attractive woman as well. But I'm like, she missed her calling in life. I'm like, nope, this is my calling, to do the news naked. I'm like, well, you know, good on you. I like Victoria that. Sinclair. Victoria Sinclair, thank you. Yep. Outstanding voice. Outstanding voice and, and an absolute pro when it comes to delivering the news. Yep. I mean, if you, if you close your eyes and listen, it's like, it could be, well, I'll, I'll, I'll use as a reference because we just watched a clip, Lisa Laflamme mm -hmm. in that same, I, I put her in the same level, uh, maybe not the same level uh, of experience, but the, the same level of professionalism when it came to giving, delivering the news. Hmm. She, and she was the only anchor when it started. Oh, the only one. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, I, I had a friend, uh, a friend uh, that uh, joined that for a while as well. So yeah, I, I, I actually heard about the Naked News for the longest time. So I thought it had gone out of business. There you go. N naked people delivering the news. That'll never go out of business. Well, just as we said, there's a market for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, and yeah, I, I think we've talked about it on the show. I uh, for charity. I think it was for charity. I think we, uh, we did Naked Boys Reading. I've participated mm -hmm. in that twice in Ottawa. So yeah, it's, it's kind of weird at first. And then you just kind of relax. You know, into if, it. if you're what, well, I mean like the nudity is almost a novelty, but at one point, you know, if you start paying attention to the actual news, you kind of forget the person's naked and it's the same thing with the naked boys reading type thing. You know, once you start getting into the, what the person's actually reading, you know, it's titillating like for five seconds as someone's walking on and then that's about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, all right, kids, um, have a wonderful weekend, and we hope to see you on Monday. And if you are joining us for Casual Fridays tonight, well, it will be my debut as a co-host at the invitation of our good friend James. What happened? What happened? Oh, we lost, we lost Mr. Beaver. I thought it was me for a sec. Uh, it looks like. Oh, wow. All kinds of issues right now. Terribly sorry about that. Maybe we'll get him back in a second. Um, ooh, food truck. Yeah, that sounds... Nudity only matters if it's pointed at you. Hmm. Um, what'd the elephant say to the naked man? How do you breathe through that tiny little thing? <laughs> That's funny. Laugh. Go ahead. Feel free. Knock yourselves out. All right, kids, uh, we're, we're going to take our leave. Uh, I'll wait a few seconds, see if Mr. Beaver can make it back in, but it looks like his system is frozen. Um, the technology was like, you are done now. Yes, that is that is correct. Yes, then you're done now. That's it. You, it's time for you to go home. Sometimes that does happen, and uh, we apologize. Um, <laughs> you like that, did you, Jen? <laughs> We apologize when the technology goes sideways. That's just how technology is. And it can be very frustrating and very upsetting, but we try and roll with it. We can. Hey, look, we get, we gave you two hours and uh, two hours plus of a show today, virtually glitch free. So I'd say that's a win. We'll chalk that up in the win column. What do you think? I think we should. So thanks to our, our title sponsors, the uh, Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, CanadianTarot.com, and the Pepper Master. As you do know, you can find us on any place on earth where you get your fine podcasts. We are available everywhere. If you want to leave us some uh, stars on, on Apple, we appreciate that. Five is, you know, is, is the recommended dosage. Did you get the double entendre there? Okay. All right. I'm reaching and I need another cup of coffee and I also have to go get rid of the last three that I had. Yeah, I'm tiling. Look, I'm running on three hours sleep. This is what happens. I will pop into um, 
Casual Friday this evening. I'm going to be working on uh, some edits for the show for James, and uh, it'll be good to have everybody back in the house. Until we meet again, my friends, you do take care of yourself. Remember, as Mr. Grizzly or Mr. Beaver always says, be kind to and gentle with yourself. Oh, look at this. We've got a beaver back, I think. Is he frozen? He's here. Oh, I'll just I'll just put him in, in the green room until he's oh, it looks like he's working. Sort of working. You're almost there. Kind of. Signal is, uh, it reminds me of, remember when the shopping channel first came on and it was done in like sto slow stop motion, <laughs> they didn't have live action. That's kind of what you look like right. the shopping channel when it first went to air. You remember that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely some sort of, uh, it looks like a bandwidth issue or something or, or maybe a processing I issue. Why. I don't know, but it's yeah. everything is, yeah. I am so sorry. Yeah, you're muffled. No, it's okay. It's fine. I got through. All right. Let's uh, roll the credits and get on out of here. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Uh, technology was trying to make sure that I could not say goodbye and wish you off to a good weekend, but I win. Ha! Technology <laughs> foiled. <laughs> and no, Mr. Rika, I'm not a deep fake. This is actual me. <laughs> See ya.